ask can he relieve us? I mean, I'm, I'm going to feel lazy at home because mm -hmm. that's how I, I get to, to work. And if I don't have fuel, how am I going to get to work? That's true. Yeah. That's true. And to also, get the, the, the few cents that I'm, I'm, I need. Also, a car is very important in what we do um, as, you know, in, in the media because it takes you from point A to point B. And also, as a mother, you need to go pick up your kids and school runs. And school runs. So, I buy it to you. Can they please, please reduce they must. All my patients. Anyway, mm. listen, I hope he's, you know, I, <laughs> I think it's intentional. We do. <laughs> I mute all of them. So if I want He's to... unmuting himself. Yeah. I've been muting here. Yeah. We are muting at all time. I'm mm. going to throw it out of the meeting. <laughs> so if, I, if you want to unmute. Uh, Where do I throw someone out of yeah. the meeting? <laughs> you open the door, Jack. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Before I let you go, yes, go who's going to be sent Um, Number one, we forgot a mighty patterns with this one. Uh, so much. Even Kumbuza, they never, never let us. If the Manhattan's with I kind of miss you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Can I please ask that you just introduce yourself? John Gillen, please mute yourself. Thank you very much. Um, we're just waiting for the project manager to join us. Um, so just give us a few minutes. Now it's my turn to serve you. Spread your wings, let me go. I just promise me, you'll let me go into the loving arms of the guys. We might ask the best way to sell you. Ensuring equal access to learning, making sure learners with disabilities are not left behind. Hey, bless you, much more. And I need a more. the and the 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 So the way you
गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन everyone check if you are check if you are you are jag me ne pasand ho ne pasand ho ke pasand ho good morning everyone um Welcome to this meeting for number D F F E T zero seventy two. Just to quickly put some ground rules, I'm going to request everyone to just mute your mics. Um, whenever you've got something to say, please raise your hand. But I ask you to just give a chance to to the project manager and whoever is talking first. Um, please make a note of all your questions that you've got, and then we will attend to them afterwards. Um, then the other thing I'm going to ask all of you to just please uh, switch off your cameras because it's affecting the bandwidth, and it will eventually affect everyone. So please switch off your cameras. Thank you. You can switch it on when you are on the platform, but otherwise, please just keep them off. Hi, thank you, everyone. Um, Mr. Butelezi, we're going to hand over to you so that you can give us a background of the bit as well as the introduction. You've got the platform. No, I get fun on a little. I get no get. Good morning, colleagues. Any problem is serious. Good morning, colleagues. Can I request that we we mute our mics if possible? Um, we were supposed to start at 10 and then we 
we had to wait for a sure. few people coming in. Marina um, Rosna. May I request Mr. Sbongile? Uh, <laughs> but it says Sbongile. I think it's Sbongile Kumet. Okay, can you please mute your 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 mic and you close the the video um just to allow um us to to connect um quite effectively thank you thank you so much so welcome to this briefing um colleagues my name is uh, uh, dumisani um Butelezi. i work for the department of forestry fisheries and the environment we are based at Steve Biko um, Street in, in Pretoria, Acadia. Um, there's a building called a Green um, Environment House. Um, um, and, and so we have advertised the, the tender that you might have seen from our tender um, um, website and other platforms um, for tendering. And we we are therefore today tabling the details um, of providing a briefing of what is contained um, on the terms of reference. And thank you for um, um, accepting our invite. And we are therefore going to, I, I, I really do not believe that we need to introduce ourselves, um, but I've got a team that comes from our own uh, supply chain uh, management section, but I also have um, project managers. Um, that should be Ms. Bultumelo Jamini and uh, Mr. Errol uh, Baloi, who will be uh, taking us uh, through the details of what is contained on the terms um, of, of reference. Um, I'm not sure whether, Jack, uh, before we give um, colleagues an opportunity to take us through the, the the terms of reference and and other tender documents do you want to perhaps um uh, say something to um, the colleagues on the platform as a representative from scm um no that's fine, no, that's fine. Um, thank you so much then. I believe that everyone is um, comfortable and um, we are going to share um, the, the document. I think that is the preferred um, a, a approach. So it allow, um, I'm not sure whether it would be we do mail or Errol to take us through to share the, the terms of reference um, um, here. And I don't know who will take us through the the, the, the document because we we all know the document is I, I just want to understand the 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 person the name of a person who will be taking us through you'll advise me on 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 that apologies for that and then we'll then allow for 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 questions um but what i would um request is is, is that we allow a person to talk through the terms of reference um, and we uh, and they talk through a certain section and then we can ask questions from that section. Then we go to the next section because the terms of reference are a bit long. So so we really cannot um, allow a person to present and go through to the end. You might have questions in between. If that is if if that is fine, maybe I should see by the show of hands um on, on on the system um can i request folex group to please switch off your video my brother take him off man hey. thank thank you um okay can i give over to my colleagues uh, who will then take us through the details of of the project of the request of the tender. Thank you. Um, thank you, Chairperson, and um, good morning, colleagues. I'm Vitumelo Samini. I am from the DFFE under the Directorate um, General Waste. 
as the chair has alluded, uh, the purpose of today's um, briefing is to take you through the terms of references for the advert which has been um, advertised for um, the appointment of, of suitable project management companies, which we require them to render project management services to the department. Um, and this is for the municipal cleaning and greening program and uh, the duration of, 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 of uh, the project is over a period of six months. Unfortunately, uh, Chairperson, I'm having a challenge with my machine. I'm not able to project. So I am requesting if I can get assistance from other colleagues from the DFFE, um, if they can just project uh, on my behalf. Thank you. Um, that is fine. Thanks, Wittumelo. Um, can we have at least um, maybe Jack or Hector to help us with the document? Thank you. Th thank you so much. Um, uh, here you go, Wittumelo. Uh, Um, is is are you are you fine with what is projected to be Dumelo? I just need to check first. Ms. Lamini. Okay, thank you, Chapas. I think I will. Yes, Chaperson. Can 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 the person who's projecting kindly take us to the papers in the introduction? Thank you, Chairperson. Um, as, as I had already alluded on, on, on the purpose of this meeting was to take uh, the colleagues through um, the TORs of the advert, which, which is currently out. Uh, we are wanting to appoint uh, suitable project management companies who will assist with project management services um, for the municipal and cleaning program uh, within all the nine provinces and, and the duration thereof is six months. So um, under the introduction and, and the background, um, colleagues uh, would be aware that the DFFE is, is mandated with uh, giving effect to, to the right of citizens to, to an environment which is not harmful to their health and their well-being. And, and we have the environment protected for the benefit of us, uh, the, the present as well as the future generations. And, and to this end, the department has provided leadership uh, in environmental management, in conservation, as well as protection towards sustainability for, for the benefit of, of South Africans and the global community. Um, the department has over the years, through uh, re reasonable legislative and other me measures, uh, 
to uh, sorry sorry we do men um can can we all please uh, mute uh, nema nema ranze please mute hello otherwise it will take us ever to finish the briefing nema ranze thank you uh, please proceed with Dumelo. Can I continue, Jefferson? Can I can I now continue, Chairperson? Am I audible enough? Yes, you are. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, we do. My I think uh, colleagues have new chat. Thanks. Thank you. Um, as I was still taking uh, colleagues through the introduction and the background to say that the department has over the years, uh, through the reasonable legislations, uh, as well as other other measures, uh, endeavor to ensure that uh, the right to environment which is not harmful and, and, and to, to the health and the protection of the environment are achieved. However, uh, it's still quite evident uh, that littering as well as illegal dumping are still some of the most common problems uh, which South Africa is affected with. And, and this is common throughout all the provinces. Uh, we realize that ineffective waste management practices can affect the well-being of, of those affected communities and obviously this can be further exacerbated by this increased illegal dumping as well as increased littering. So now we, we are now having the, the municipal cleaning and greening program, which basically seeks to, to address the, the improper uh, or the, the impact which is caused by the improper waste management. And, and it also strives to, to contribute to economic empowerment as well as transformation. Um, how do we do this? Through a, a labor intensive um, and social development initiatives, which have a market impact on, on the employment opportunities of, of the citizens. And um, the aim of, of the municipal cleaning and greening is basically to combat environmental degradation and ensure that our country is free from litter as well as illegal dumps. And um, how this will be uh, done, it will be done through the mass public employment of, of the unemployed with a special prioritization, looking at women, looking at the youth, as well as looking at people who are living with disabilities. So um, as I have mentioned, the program is to be implemented in, in all nine provinces within all the, 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 the municipalities uh, throughout the country. And it's basically about keeping the public space clean and tidy, uh, but also ensuring that uh, people do not basically go hungry through through the employment which will be created by by, by this um, project. I'm not sure if I should jump to objectives now or um, you, you will guide me there. I think because I gave I, I gave the, 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 the just the background. Maybe I should I should now talk to the objectives. Basically, the objectives for for this is to appoint uh, service providers who will provide uh, the project management services. What what do these services in, include? They include the mass participation uh, employment through recruitment of 60 participants, uh, per local municipalities within the district, as well as 120 participants. In, in in the metro municipalities. Um, 
also what we require is is that there should be contracting of of these participants um the participants also need to be registered for for coeda and uif as as per the labor compliance measures um also supply delivery and offload of of the tools of trade in all the provinces um the the the, the addresses will be provided to 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 the uh, recommended bidders on on where uh the the, the delivery will be done for for this uh, tools of trade as well as pre and and exit medical surveillance uh to all participants Thank you, Chair. Should I jump to scope? Okay. Thank you. The, the scope basically is, is to ensure that the successful uh, project management companies will be approved, uh, will be appointed rather to register participants for QIDA, to register them for UIF and comply with all the legislative uh, requirements. The su successful service provider will supply, uh, deliver, and offload the following tools of trade at respective provinces which the bidder has bidded for. Um, we require uh, litter picks, uh, we require the rakes, the spades, shovels, brooms, um, the handheld scales, the refuse bags for recyclable, the residual refuse bag, wheelbarrows, and first aid kits. Um, colleagues need to be in, to be aware that obviously the quantities per province are different, and under the the, the present schedules, uh, you would see the the, the different um, quantities per province. Um, this is obviously um, due to 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 the fact that uh, each province has got different uh, numbers of of participants. Uh, hence, the numbers are not are not the same throughout all the nine provinces. Um, the successful uh, service provider will be required to also provide a pre and an exit medical surveillance to all um, participants. Well, basically, the pre and uh, exit medical surveillance uh, include. I see we lost the document there. Okay, thank you. It's back. The, the pre and, and exit medical surveillance will include the assessment of, of the need for medical surveillance um, based on the risk exposure, submission of attendance registers for the participants, screening um, as per the labor compliance measures. Um, the entire program is is anchored on combating the current waste management challenges which are alluded on and, and therefore um, we require a total 60 participants per local municipalities and 120 participants per metropolitan um, and this will be obviously be done under the extended public works program model uh, we, who will be expected to lead the clean up campaigns within the district and the and the municipalities and furthermore um, the service provider will have to identify the waste hotspots um, working closely with the municipalities they will have to um, clear uh, illegal dumps and, and clear the litter and they will be required uh, where required they will have to make transport arrangements to, to service the department. And this is uh, with regards to the transportation of waste, uh, because you find that some municipalities do not have uh, vehicles to, to assist with, with, with the um, collection of waste. And therefore we will then require you where required to assist. Uh, however, all these activities will be undertaken through our uh, the, the supervision of, of the dedicated DFFE officials who are based in the district. Uh, those are our local government support um, colleagues based in all the district, as well as the local municipalities who are the youth community outreach programs, who are our soldiers in the in the district as well as the local municipalities. The the program is meant to then create work opportunities for South African youth 
um, in all 44 districts as well as eight metros. And, and the stipend therefore is 120 per day. And uh, participants will work a maximum of 22 days a month and the, the stipend uh, colleagues need to know that it will be paid uh, by the DFFE uh, through uh, EPIP. Um, I saw already there's a question which a colleague has posed on, on our dashboard. Uh, one bit document should be submitted for all provinces tendered for together with a present schedule per province. Clearly, you need to clearly mark colleagues the province which, which you are putting the, the tender for. Um, the expected deliveries uh, are as follows. Um, the appointed project management team, the appointed project management team um, is expected to deliver on the entire project management phases um, through the following, whereby uh, the supply, delivery, and offloading of tools of trade within the specific time frame, And um, as I've mentioned earlier on per province, um, colleagues would then see that there's different quantities for, 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 the, um, for the items which we require. Um, Chairperson, I'm not sure if I need to go through all the items per province or um, how are we going to, to tackle this? Um, for litter pickers, um, in, this yes. is the Eastern Cape. So, so you would see with the with the Cape, there's different quantities yeah. for, for 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 yes. Yeah, I I I really do not think we need to go through um, each of these uh, provinces unless um, colleagues from the platform want to raise uh, specific questions with the respective provinces. And I've seen a hand from Chandu Kolo, uh, Nali. Uh, you can proceed, Chandu Kolo. Okay. Uh, uh, my name is Chandu Kolo, Nali, from the Eastern Cape. Uh, from the Sarabatman district, local municipality, Sunday's River Valley. I just wanted to check something. I see the document is uh, has got different sections, uh, A, B, C, D onwards. I just, uh, um, I was struggling to get connected earlier. I'm not sure if this was uh, covered already in the, earlier presentations, but are you allowed to select a section which you think you could provide between all the prov uh, sections that are, are, for example, in in the Eastern Cape bid, because I'm in the Eastern Cape and I'm interested in bidding in, in, in that one, or are you, is it compulsory that if you want to submit your, your your bid you need to be able to supply all the sections thank you sir um sorry chairperson to me sunny yes um yes uh, okay uh, we, have, uh, we have noted the question can i please ask that uh, members just make a note of the questions and then we will answer the questions at the very end of the presentation. Okay, no, thanks. Uh, thanks, uh, uh, Jacques. Um, can can we do like that, um, uh, colleagues, maybe? Let's open for at least five questions now, and then we, we, we jot down those questions, and then we proceed with the presentation. Then there will be a question and answer session, um, as, as, as much as I understand the input from our SCM colleague. Thank you. Can you please help me with hands? I'm connected uh, with a phone colleague now. Um, I'm really struggling to identify hands, but uh, I think there is one hand. 
There's two ends that the law and and Fusan. That the law and Fusan. Uh, morning, colleagues. Uh, my name is Daulu Sufi uh, from uh, Limpopo, Capricorn uh, region, under uh, Lepelungumbi municipality. Uh, my question, when you go to your price schedule, right, if you can check under Limpopo, I think you guys uh, uh, didn't add up correctly there. When you check, uh, let's say, Stephen, because uh, let's check A, B, C, D and check subtotal D, D, where you say stipend to UIF plus quieter cost. You say it's for 4 million, whereas when you add up A, B, C, I don't think it will give you that amount. Can, 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 I'm not sure, but I don't even have to take a calculator. You can even see or no. Those calculations don't add up to what you guys wrote there. So I just want to find out a uh, way forward on that one because I I, I guess it, it doesn't uh, affect us on our costing, but uh, I'm not sure how you are going to correct it. And then the other one, but I'll come up to other questions. We can move on, but I, I just need clarity on this one only. Under Limpo, price schedule. Thanks. Vusani can come in and, and Jonathan. Okay. Uh, it's Vusani from Limpopo. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Go on. Yes, let's go to page uh, to, to page maybe 52, if, if possible. To or, or any of yeah page fifty two or any of, or maybe let me just say section section I of the of the costing of the project cost section I of any of of, of any of the project costs can I proceed. Uh, so, sorry, Busan. Yeah, I'm saying that section section I of the project costing the project management fees. Sorry, Busan. Uh, can we allow the presenter to continue and finish the presentation? Because uh, most of the question uh, that we are asking, the presenter hasn't uh, presented there, so we're still going there. So let's allow the presenter to finish the presentation. At the end of the presentation, we'll allow. Uh, all our prospective service provider to ask questions. Okay, no so let's allow her uh, to continue with the presentation. At the end, you will be offered an opportunity to ask questions. Okay, no problem. So let's allow her uh, to continue. Please. Uh, Thank please. you. Thank you, SCM. Thank you, SCM. Thanks. Thank you, Hector. Can I request the colleague to assist with uh, the loading again? Just take us to 5.2, that way I had stopped. Thank you. Page 
Please go down again, colleague. Um, thanks. Thank you so much. Um, colleagues, I uh, before we took uh, the question. Sorry, Mr. Miller. Mr. Miller. Um, yeah. Can you just take us through the list of items that are required? Um, you can just take us through once. The quantities will obviously differ, but please take us through the list. Okay. So it's, one it's problem fine. is fine. Um, but the list okay. was, was, was already that. mentioned. I don't think so. No, it's fine. I can just take colleagues again through error. It's okay. Yeah, we can just do Western Cape, uh, Jack, just go a bit. Yeah, it's fine. So, um, colleagues, these are the the uh, items which are required, the, the tools for, for trade which are required for the program. And as alluded earlier on, the quantities will differ, obviously, per province. The first one is, is the steel rake. Uh, there's the specification. It's the all steel heavy duty 16th leisure. Um, the next one is a gutter sweeper broom. The specifications are there. It's a complete millennium synthetic brown polypropylene fiber uh, with a wooden handle and a 55 grip uh, and a 30.5 centimeter. The next one is a steel rake, all steel heavy duty, uh, 16th uh, leisure. The next one would be the Gutter sweeper, can you go up a bit? The gutter sweeper broom, a, a complete millennium synthetic, uh, which is a brown propylene fiber with a wooden handle, a 55 grip and 30.5 centimeter. The next one is a concrete wheelbarrow, the dimensions, uh, it, it's 1.410 millimeter, the length, and 600 millimeter, the weight, and the six uh, and 370 millimeter, the height. And the next one is the, is the heavy duty refuse bags for, for street cleaning. And these are your, your black heavy uh, refuse bag, heavy duty, uh, the 30 micron, uh, and it should be 75 times 95 centimeter. The next one is, is a heavy duty refuse bag. This is a clear refuse bag uh, with the same micron as, as the black refuse bag and, and, and the same, and, and the same uh, dimensions, centimeters as, as uh, the black refuse bag. Uh, we also require the first aid kit. With the first aid kit, uh, it should have the the, the following um, <clears throat> items, which are stated: the uh, refill contents, clothing cutters, first aid guidance leaflet, hypergut face shields. Uh, it should have a hyperplast microporous tape. Um, the safety pins, this is a pack of 12 assorted, um, uh, it's two of them, the bend, the, the bend dressings, um, 10 by 10 centimeter, hyper bend, conforming bandages, two of them, a uh, hyper gut foil blanket, three, hyper bend triangular bend, bandage, three, hyper cover finger dressing, three, hyper cover sterile eye dressing, three, hyper plast, Washproof plaster, a pack of, of 30, of, of 20, um, 30 sterile moist uh, wipes, uh, six hyper cover sterile dressing, a medium, uh, nine hyper touch natural gloves. Uh, okay. So um, that is the, the content of, of first aid kit. Um, the next item is the SABS non-contact uh, body infrared uh, digital thermometer, and uh, it should come with power supply, which is the, the two pieces of AAA batteries, uh, and it should have a low battery uh, indicator, and, and it should be able to measure the body temperature from 32 to 42.9 degrees Celsius. And the testing distance should be one to five centimeter. The accuracy thereof should be a plus minus 0 0.2 degrees. We also need a, a handheld scale, and, and this handheld scale should have a 
capacity of, of 50 kilograms. So those are the items for, for the tools. Um, colleagues, I'm now going to, to move to the occupational medical um, requirements. The, the occupation medical practitioners appointed by the service provider um, will be expected to, to perform the, the pre as well as the exit medical surveillance on all participants um, in the province based on the occupational risk exposure profile. And the medical surveillance program should encompass, but it should not be limited to um, the following um, assessment. It should be a prelim preliminary health risk assessment, a pre-employment health screening assessment and evaluation, a clinical history, that would be your occupational history and a hazardous a hazard exposure, the physical examinations, medical history, medical treatment, which uh, the beneficiary has been in the last three years, the vision screening and, and vision acuity, and um, there's a chest x-ray, there is also a um, <clears throat> Special examinations such as your your spirometry tests, the ECG. Uh, this is in case if if the employees seem to be having cardiac abnormalities. Um, it's also blood and urine analysis, biological monitoring and biological effect monitoring for hazardous uh, HCA, and uh, medical opinion uh, referrals. And under the, the health surveillance, we are looking for um, the health, the hearing screen, which would include the audiometry, as well as the lung function test or the respiratory um, surveillance. So the occupational medical practitioner and the occupational hygiene practitioner are part of, of this pre preliminary health risk assessment. And, and this will allow them to draw up a risk-based medical surveillance plan. Uh, all pre-employed and, and periodic medical screening and examinations are to be conducted uh, and or clinically directed by an approved occupational medical practitioner. And obviously when you say approved, you mean with the relevant qualification in the occupational health. Um, the nursing, uh, the nurse uh, work shall be carried by the occupational health practitioner, and and where the service provider makes use of other professionals such as your physios, they need to ensure that uh, that person uh, holds a qualification in occupational health, which is obviously recognised by the South African Medical and Dental Council. Uh, um, the next one is that um, where services may be provided by the appropriate qualified nurse or by a practitioner, depending on the particular nurse of, of, of the case, the service provider may decide which professional is the most appropriate to assist with, with providing those, those services. There needs to be a clear. There needs to be a clear criteria which should be established to indicate when it is appropriate for a case to be dealt with, uh, either by by an occupational health practitioner and when by a by a medical practitioner or any other uh, practitioner. And the service provider will need to provide a clerical and administrative covers. They need to assist with administrative services and recording system to enable the services uh, which are to be delivered should be effectively and efficiently. And all medical equipment and supplies are required to, to deliver the services. Uh, the individual electronic medical reports uh, needs to be submitted to the department within one or, or five working days immediately after the assessment of the final medical questionnaire uh, or after the completion of, of the medical exam examinations has been conducted.
Can we please mute? Uva. I I don't see the person who has opened the mic. Can can you check again? Uva. I think Uva. Uva. Group. Uva. Uva. Group. Thank Uva you. Group. Thank. Thank you. Um. Uh, the the service provider needs to ensure that uh, they provide a pre and exit medical surveillance on on the number of referrals which have been made, uh, appointments which have been undertaken, appointments which has not been attended, uh, pre employment uh, which has been completed, and and the reasons for referral complaints and and so, and so forth. Uh, this is to provide information to analyze. The trends by the service in in a form which is to be agreed by the department, as well as the service providers are required to attend uh, bi-monthly monitoring meetings with the department, and this is to ensure that they report on the key performance indicators. Um, we also need a, a maintaining a, them to maintain occupational health records, which are relating to all the the participants, which would then include uh, the health surveillance document which would include uh, where appropriate and also to pass on the records to a successor service provider at the end of, of the contract period, if, if necessary. Go to 5.2.7, Polik. Five point two point seven. Thank you. The occupational health services uh, must be provided by the service provider from a location which is uh, acceptable to the department and, and this location should be physically accessible to all participants uh, with properly equipped consulting rooms uh, and or mobile clinics where required. The details of the communication uh, methods will be agreed and evaluated in the course of the bi-monthly contract performance as well as the review meetings which will uh, be conducted between the department and a successful bidder. And the records must be kept uh, of all referrals. The monthly reports will be required to monitor progress of the contract, and the details of the reports will be agreed with the service provider in the course of, of the contract. The individual health and medical records will be kept by the service provider um, as necessary and in accordance with all the requirements of, of, of the legislative, uh, relevant legislative, which include uh, relating to the data protection, uh, relating to access to medical reports and health records, as well as health and safety. At the end of the contract term, the service provider needs to ensure that the individual records are submitted to the department and the medical examination shall take into account shall take into account the content and the health risks of, of the occupation, the, the safety risks to work on progress and with due um, regard to the job specification and legislated uh, requirements. An OREP uh, of each examinee is, is to be compiled and um, <clears throat> At, at the pre-medical examination, this is the uh, within the 14 days uh, employment. There also need to be a pre-placement and exit medical examinations, and the medical evaluate shall ensure that physical and psychological 
capacity of an employee and participant to work efficiently in an orb of his intended occupation. Um, they need to evaluate that uh, the promotion and securing of the health and safety of employees and participants through the early detection of the disease to ensure the safe performance of duties and execution of work uh, processes through time years detection of risk to safety as well as to comply with all the statutory requirements. Mr. Melo? Yes, Jack. Um, can I just, for the sake of the meeting, please, can you just, where you've got the abbreviations, please give us the entire description of your abbreviations, just for clarity for each member here. Abbreviation. For example, OREP. OREP. OREP is Occupational Risk Exposure Profile. Okay, so wherever you've got something like that, please clarify for all the members. Noted. Can I continue? The Occupational Medical Practitioner shall advise the department on the development and or improvement of its medical surveillance program and advice on matters of occupational health which are related to policy and practices. And this is with specific reference to occupational risk exposure profile classes. Can you go up, Jack? Five point two point one six. Thank you. Uh, when an appointment is made to to respond for a pre-employment medical surveillance, and the participants miss the appointment, or or they cancel the the um, appointment less than twenty four hours before their time, the service provider can charge for that appointment if they have not been able to obtain a replacement of that appointment and the charge will be the same as that of the initial appointment. Um, where where practicable, um, the cancelled appointment should in the first inst instant be offered to another uh, participant of, of, of the program. If the service provider conducts uh, or rather considers it appropriate to offer a new appointment to a person who has missed cancellation uh, or, or cancelled an appointment, then the relevant line function should be informed immediately of the reason for, for the cancellation and then advised on the new date as well as the new time for, for, for the for that uh, particular um, participant. And, and the repeated failures to attend by an employee uh, are require attention by, by the line manager. The project management services will also include uh, the signing of employee contracts with, with participants, administrative um, administration of, of the statutory requirements, and this is as follows. The registration of participants with the Department of Employment and Labor for UIF. Um, the registration of participants with the Department of Employment and Labor for COEDA. Administering and maintaining monthly reports to the Department of Employment and Labor. Compulsory implementation and administration of COEDA claims for all participants. Um, compulsory functional training for participants, induction for all participants, uh, the shield rep, six participants per municipalities, and with the metro municipalities, it's 12 participants. Uh, for first aid, it, it's six municipalities, it's six per, per local municipalities, and 12 for, for metro, and for occupational health and safety, all participants have to go through the compulsory functional training uh, induction. Under operational, um, 
the success, successful bidder uh, is required to provide storage facilities for the material, uh, for the tools, as well as equip, equipment for the duration of the project, which is six months. Ensure that they, they, there's provision of waste collection services of the cleared illegal dump to be disposed of at a landfill uh, where, where required for, for such services. The team will also develop uh, the following, but but obviously it's not limited to the project management scope or the project charter, uh, a project scope, a, a work breakdown structure, which clearly uh, shows the deliverables as well as the activities which are to be conducted, um, a responsibility matrix, a comprehensive project network, a communication plan, as well as a risk management plan, and uh, lastly, a stakeholder management plan. So under the monthly reporting and the data capturing uh, the participants' employment, uh, better to select the provinces uh, where services will be rendered and must also complete the pricing schedule for, for each province or for each which they are choosing to participate in. And, and if one fails to do that, the department will evaluate based on the submitted pricing schedule. If a supplier is bidding for more than one province, they should submit one bid proposal, only one bid proposal, and then complete all the pricing schedule for the provinces which, which you are bidding for. Um, and um, obviously, you have to also be able to to pick uh, which which province you are bidding for, such that we can know um, which pricing schedule um, you are referring to. The bidders are also required to indicate capacity to carry out all these required services. The period uh, or the duration of this assignment. Uh, the period is for the successful bidder or service provider to be appointed for a period of six months after signing the, the SLA or the MOA, both by the parties as well as after receiving an official purchase order number. With the costing, uh, are, you, are you going to come in the hectare and assist or, or should I still talk to it? Jack Hector, under costing. I publish a good website. Thing. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Wetumelo. Uh, we can take over from here. And then we will allow question uh, later. So we'll take over from the costing uh, and also on the evaluation criteria and also the special condition of contract. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Utumelo, and thank you, uh, Chairperson, and uh, thank you, all prospective service provider. So I'm going to take you through costing, and then from there, I will take you through the evaluation criteria that will apply in this bit, uh, so that you understand what is expected from you. And then I will also go through with the special condition of contract of the bid. So under the costing, uh, 7.1, we're saying a comprehensive fixed costing must be provided on SBD 3.3 for a details and an extra a pricing, a price a schedule guide guidance, uh, inclusive of all disbursement costs such as delivery costs, traveling and accommodation costs, and any other expenses inclusive of that. So if you have seen the pricing schedule, each and every pricing schedule for each province has SBD 
So if you are bidding for Limpopo, I'm appealing to all of you, uh, please complete uh, Limpopo pricing schedule, including the SBD 3.3. If you are bidding for Western Cape, you do the same, you fully complete the pricing schedule. Because if you don't complete it, it means we won't have the, the price. So it will be challenged to evaluate your proposals. So all the costs that uh, you, you are going to, to include them in your bid, so they need to be included on your pricing schedule. So that if we, you are successful, we are not going to expect any other costs that are not in your tender document. So the department won't allow any cost that comes after. So if you are going to include your cost for traveling, accommodation, all the costs that will be involved, you need to include them on your pricing schedule. So when you code, so you need to, to be aware that there will be costs that will require you to travel, there will be costs that will require you to get accommodation and so on. So just include all the, the costs. So 7.2, the budget must include storage facility or tools of trade for the duration of the project and per kilometer rate in cases where waste collection will be required at the municipality. Uh, as this cost will be covered by the global fee proposed by the bidder. Uh, traveling costs and time spent or get between home and office of the project manager and the department office will not be for the account of the department. So the department reserves the right to negotiate the price. So what we are saying here, there are costs that might uh, incur, like now, you are connecting to this virtual meeting. So obviously it's a cost from the prospective service provider. And then there will be other costs when you print the tender document. There will be other costs when you are traveling from various provinces coming to Pretoria to submit your bid. So those costs we are saying, they won't be in the account of the department. So you need to cater for those costs in your bid proposals when you submit your uh, tender document. So the costing should be limited to tools of trade, medical surveillance, and the project management services. Uh, in bracket, we said employment or recruitment and placement of participants, administration of salaries or stipends, and administration of URF and COIDA per district. Uh, 7.4, uh, project management services company will be expected to cover all municipalities within the province. So if you are bidding for a Northwest province, it means you, you are going to be expected to cover the entire province. So you're not going to choose to say Northwest, I'm going to deliver only tools. I'm not going to do medical surveillance. So you are going to be expected to render all the services, the project management services, uh, medical surveillance, as well as the delivery, delivering of tools. So if you choose the province, you are going to cater all services that are required for the province. 7.5, uh, the service provider will be expected to provide information related to the proposed expect uh, applicable in line with the provision of deliverables uh, in section 5 above. The department reserves the right to negotiate with preferred bidder identified in the evaluation process regarding any items and condition, including prices, location, or any area without offering the same opportunity to any other bid who have not been awarded the status of the preferred bid. So what do we mean in, the, in that clause? So we are saying as the department, uh, we might feel that uh, the price that the bidder is charging, uh, we are not able to afford it or is not market related. Then the department will then uh, negotiate with the the bidder so that we can come to an agreement in terms of the, the price. But that opportunity, if uh, Witu Melo is the one recommended for KZA, so that opportunity won't be offered to Hector because Hector is not recommended for KZA. And then if Dumisan is recommended for Northern Cape, uh, that opportunity won't be offered to Jack because Jack is not recommended for Northern Cape. So the opportunity to negotiate will goes to the recommended bid, who is recommended for a particular province. So colleagues, remember, we are going to appoint a province, meaning that 
we are going to have nine successful service provider. Each province is going to have a successful service provider. So it might happen that uh, one of the service, uh, service provider is recommended for more than one province, depending on who scored the highest point. So, but we are going to appoint for nine provinces. We are not going to appoint national, we are appointing provincial. So I'm moving on to paragraph eight uh, for the evaluation criteria. So we're going to have five phases, as you can see. We have five, uh, phase one, which is pre-compliance, pre-qualification, mandatory requirement, functionality criteria, uh, and the last one, which is price and the BE. So the pre-compliance or initial screening, so this one is about the retainable document, our SBDs. So I will explain one by one so that you, you understand. So as uh, Wittumelo indicated earlier on, you are required to submit one bid proposal. So for those who have been bidding in the department, uh, you will remember that in the past, we used to request uh, one original document and a copy. So we discontinue uh, that method of requesting two documents. So you are only required to submit one bid proposal, which will be your master bid document. So you don't have to make a copy of the original and submit it. Submit only one bid document. That bid document will cover for all the provinces. And then it should be in one envelope. So item number two. And then the, so when you give us one uh, master bid document, it means all your pricing will be inclusive in that one bid document. You are not going to submit a separate envelope for pricing schedule. So it's, go it's going to be one bid proposals inclusive of all other documentation, your pricing schedules, your SBDs. So it should be one binded document. We are not going to have a two separate uh, envelope. So it's one envelope for one master B document. So item number two is SBD one. So SBD one is for the invitation where you are going to, to, call, to include your details such as telephone number, your address, inquiry people from the company, you also see inquiry people from the department. So I'm appealing to you to fully complete it and sign it. And then the item number three was saying text compliance and CSD registration. So as we are all aware, National Treasury have introduced a central supplier database or CSD in 2016. So all service providers from Musina to Cape Town are required to be registered on central supplier database. So if you are not registered and you are the recommended one, uh, the <laughs> department will take the second best because you are not registered registered on CSD. So I'm appealing to all of you, if you are not yet registered on CSD, uh, I'm appealing to all of you to go and register. You can register at Internet Cafe, you can register using your laptop, you can register using your phone, or you can uh, request assistance from the department. At the department, we have a unit called Demand Management where they, they can assist if you are able to register. And then uh, you can also check Provincial Treasury, Provincial Treasury, they also assist uh, service providers to register on CSD. So I'm appealing to all of you, register on CSD so that we can be able to verify your tax matter. Remember, we are not allowed to do business with any companies whose tax matters are not in order. So we only verify tax matters through CSD. So if you are not registered, we are unable to verify. SBD 3.3. It goes with the annexures. So if you check all the annexures, uh, on top of the annexures, there is SBD 3.3. Fully complete uh, SBD 3.3 and the annexures so that uh, we, we will have your price. SBD 4, uh, this one is the declaration form where you are going to fully complete it and sign. There is a table on SBD 4 where you are going to list directors uh, that are attached to the company, and then you will indicate their identity numbers. 
And then if they are working for the state, you will write their personal numbers. And then if they are not working for the state, so state is any national department, any provincial department, or any local government. And then you will just indicate not applicable uh, under the PESA. So you need to come, don't leave the table blank. Fully complete it and then sign. And then SBD 6.1, very, very important. Uh, most of the service providers, they don't complete it. And remember, this form is the one that uh, allow you to claim all the preference points. So because here we're going to use 9010, so it means if you are a level one and you didn't complete this form, you are going to lose all the 10 points. So I'm appealing to all of you to fully complete SBD 6.1 and then sign but you won't be disqualified if you don't uh, fill it but you are going to lose all the 10 points so if you are a level one losing the 10 points remember if you are the cheapest company you will be sitting at 90 points so if you are sitting at 90 points the company which is number two is sitting at uh, 88 so that company will overtake you because if they are level one they will be sitting at uh, 98 so i'm appealing to all of you to ensure that uh, you complete SBD 6.1 and sign. Uh, item number eight, SBD 8. Uh, here you are going to declare if there is anyone within your company who was in supply chain before. So that information needs to be declared. So if you have Hector, we have been working at the environment, and then Hector decided to leave the department, now he's employed in your company. You need to, de to declare that information or to disclose that information. So if you don't disclose that information and then it happens that the department find out at the evaluation, you will be disqualified. Or it happens that you are awarded the contract, you are currently rendering the services, the department uh, has the right to terminate the, uh, the, the contract due to misrepresentation because you didn't disclose that information. Uh, SBD 9, which is on item number 8, Certificate of Independent Bid Determination. So this certificate, you need to complete it and sign. So by virtue of signing on this uh, SBD 9, you are saying mm -hmm. your bid document is independent. Hector no. doesn't know about your bid proposals or any other service provider does not know about your bid proposals. Uh, meaning that you are confirming that you are not colluding with any other bidder or you are not colluding with any other officials in the department, whether from supply chain or within the branches in the department. So collusion is not allowed. So if it happens, you are colluding with any of the officials in the department, whether it's environment, it's healthy, it's agriculture, you are going to be disqualified if the department find out. So you are not allowed to collude. So even when you submit your bid proposals, bid number two must you know about what is happening on bid number one. And number one must you know what is happening on bid number two. Your bid proposal should be independent, uh, which is why uh, the, the, the constitution encourages the, the competitive, uh, competitiveness in terms of the, the bidding process. Uh, the item number nine is regarding the joint venture. So some of the bidders might come to an agreement to say we want to bid for Northwest uh, using the joint venture agreement or we want to bid in Pumalanga as a joint venture. So it might be a joint venture of two companies, three companies, there is no limitation. So you can have a joint venture for as many as you can. So there is no limitation. However, when you enter into that agreement, you need to submit a signed joint venture agreement by both parties. If it's four parties, all parties need to sign that joint venture agreement. And then uh, if it's two parties, all parties need to sign the joint venture agreement. And then you can indicate who's the lead partner and how much percentage is carried by the lead partner. And then the other requirement, which is required when you form the joint venture. If, uh, if I'm Felicia, uh, it's Felicia, it's Emily, it's Hector, it's Jack. We want to form a joint venture. Obviously, we might be having a different BE status level of contributor. Felicia might be a level one company, Emily a level two company, 
Hector Eleven Eight Company, Jack Eleven Three Company. So as the joint venture, we need to have one consolidated BE certificate. So if you don't have a consolidated BE certificate, you are going to lose all the points. So when you combine, uh, they are going to determine one BE certificate that will represent the joint venture agreement. So once you enter into a joint venture agreement, you are not allowed to, separate, to submit separate BE certificate. So you need to submit consolidated BE certificate. And with companies that are going to use a son of David, with son of David, you won't be able to do a joint venture. So you need to get a BE certificate. So that is uh, the pre-compliance criteria where you are going to be expected to complete and sign. So there is a a resolution that you should provide uh, where one member will, will sign representing the company. So if the company is having four directors, some they will have ten directors, so obviously there will be one person who will be nominated by that company to sign on behalf of the company. So you need to attach a resolution to support that to say on this date the company have resolved that uh, actor is nominated to sign the tender document on behalf of the company. So there, there, there should be a resolution to sign if, if more than one, one member of the company, if there are more than one member in the company. Um, members, thank you. This is Jacques speaking. Um, if you take a look on your SPD-1, there is a, the provision for this is there on the SPD-1. And we do find a lot of people who are submitting bids that they do not read this and then they end up not uh, attaching this document. So please make sure whenever you need to attach something, make sure that you do attach it. This is very important. Um, to also just to make it easier, like this one is relating to the SPD-1. So attach it to your SPD-1. Um, your SPD 6.1, it's relating to your BEE. So attach your BEE certificate with the SPD 1. It just makes it easier for us when we are doing the actual evaluation so that we do not miss documents. Thank you. Uh, the next criteria is a pre-qualification criteria. So, colleagues and pro prospective service providers, uh, before I can take you through this uh, uh, criteria, I, I just want to highlight that uh, as we, we are all aware, there was a constitutional ruling. A con uh, the, co the, the Constitutional Court has made a ruling with regard to the uh, preferential procurement regulation of 2017. So that regulation is also affecting uh, this criteria that I'm going to present here. So the reason I'm raising this uh, prospective service providers, uh, the, 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 the management in the department, uh, they are meeting today where they are going to also discuss the, the constitutional ruling. So where I'm sitting now, I don't know what will be the way forward from the department side regarding this uh, pre-qualification because it's affected by the Constitutional Court. And the Constitutional Court is the highest court in the land. So if they pronounce, there is no any other court that can challenge uh, that decision. So it might happen that uh, this criteria may be removed from this uh, a, a, a bid, but I'm not saying it should be removed. So I'm saying it might be removed uh, because the department is going to make a decision. Uh, currently, they, they, they've engaged national treasuries, they've engaged, uh, uh, engaged other legal experts. So, so far they have been pronounced on, on this uh, criteria. And this criteria was done uh, before the Constitutional Court pronounced on the preferential procurement regulation of 2017. So the Constitutional Court has declared the, the regulation invalid. So, but I'm going to present uh, this pre-qualification so that uh, 
Okay, just before I can present, uh, Jack want to come in. Um, good morning again, members. So just to clarify, for now, please, you need to complete your documents as if this is still valid. Um, once we've got that ruling from our management, it is then that we will maybe take it out. But for now, please complete the documents as per the advertisement. So please fill this in, and then when it comes to the evaluation, that's where then we will take it out if it is no longer part of the bid. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Jack, for that. So I'm going to take you through the pre-qualification uh, so that you will be uh, you, you will be able to understand what is required from you. So phase two, I think it's a pre-qualification criteria and it will apply in this bid. So the following pre-qualification criteria will apply and all bids that do not meet a pre-qualification requirement will be disqualified and not be evaluated further. So our pre-qualification was saying only bidders who are subcontracting 80% portion of the work to anyone or more of the following designated groups will be considered for this bid as per the preferential procurement regulation of 2017. So as we are all aware what is pre prescribed in the regulation, the regulation is saying when the, the attenders opportunities that are above 30 million rand, we need to have a condition for subcontracting. So that is why we are having a 30% portion of work to be subcontracted, to be uh, subcontracted. So the requirement here, it means the 30% portion of this work for the overall contract, you need to subcontract 30% portion of the work. So if you, if you, as you, have, you have seen when uh, Wikimelo was presenting, there are three different types of services. The first service, is the medical surveillance. Second service is the project management services. The last one is the supply and delivery of tools. So it might happen that a company that specialized on delivering and supplying of tools might not have the competence of medical surveillance. Then it's an opportunity for them to subcontract that portion. Same way with the company for project management services they might not have the competence of medical surveillance, then they will subcontract that portion. And then the medical surveillance company, it will also subcontract the portion of uh, project management services. So it's three, three different types of services that we are, uh, we are aware of the department that one company might not have all the three competencies. That is where you can subcontract another portion. So where do we subcontract this 30%? So we have Roman figure one up to four. So we are saying you may subcontract to a company which is an EME or QSE, which is at least 51 owned by a black people. And then number two, EME or QSE, which is at least 51 owned by a black people who are used. And then Roman figure three, you can subcontract to an EME or QSE company, which is at least a uh, 51 percent owned by a uh, black people who are women and then roman figure four you can subcontract to an eme or qse which is at least 51 owned by people with disabilities so as we are all aware disabilities they vary so we are not specific in terms of what type of disability as long as within that company or the owner of that company has a uh, disability then you can subcontract portion of the work. So you can also subcontract to an EME or QSE, uh, which is uh, owned by women, owned by, by youth. So those are the, are the condition of the subcontracting. Or these are the designated sectors that you need to target when you, you subcontract. So I'm moving on to 8.3.3. Tenderers or contractors must submit proof of subcontracting arrangement between the main tenderer and the subcontractor. Proof of subcontracting arrangement may include a subcontracting 
agreement between maintainer and the subcontractor. A written commitment or undertaking by the tenderer or contractor to subcontract in accordance with the pre-qualification criterion uh, will also be acceptable. So what we are saying in this clause, when you submit your bid proposals, uh, we need to see the commitment from the bidder and the subcontractor. So that com commitment will come in the form of subcontracting arrangement, which will be signed by both parties, the main contractor and the subcontractor. Or you can have a return a commitment or undertaking by the tenderer or the contractor to subcontract in accordance with the pre-qualification, and then you won't be disqualified. Uh, the responsibility to subcontract with competent and capable subcontractors rests with the main contractor or supplier. So we are not limiting service providers here. So you can subcontract whoever you want to subcontract because uh, if the department gives you subcontractors and then those subcontractors are not performing, then we are going to blame the department. So that responsibility is given to all service providers to choose their best subcontractors so that if they are not performing, it will be the responsibility of the main contractor to deal with the non-performance or uh, poor services that the subcontractor is rendering. Uh, the contractor will be conducted, concluded between the main contractor and the institution. Therefore, the main contractor and not the subcontractor will be held liable for the performance in items of its contractual obligation. So you, you might have three subcontractors, you might have four subcontractors, you might have one subcontractor. So the department will enter into a contract or an agreement with the main contractor. So what does that mean? If the main contractor does not pay the subcontractor, we are not expecting the subcontractor to come to the department and demand payment because that is their arrangement and agreement. As we only deal with the main contractor, so hence we are going to subcontract the main contractor. So if there is issue of payment between subcontractor and the main contractor, they will resolve it themselves. Us will only deal with the main contractor. If there are challenges, problems that affect the main contractor, the department will then sit down with the main contractor to find a way forward or to address those challenges. Uh, main contractors or supplier are discouraged from subcontracting with their sub, sub, subsidiary companies as this may be interpreted as subcontracting with themselves or using their subsidiaries for fronting. Where primary contractor subcontractors with a subsidiary, this must be declared in tender document. So what we are saying, you find that a uh, a uh, Dumisani company, within a Dumisani company, there are, there are small companies that uh, are within a Dumisani company. So we are discouraging Dumisani to subcontract those companies because it might look like it's fronting. Instead of uh, advancing other emerging companies, uh, Dumisani is, is promoting its own companies. So we are saying target companies that are not attached to your company so that you advance those companies. Tenderers that do not meet subcontracting requirements are considered as being none, not acceptable. Tenders and must be disqualified and may not be considered for further evaluation or award. So if you don't meet the subcontracting requirements, the EME, the QSC, which are 51 owned by black people, the youth, the women, people with disabilities, then you will be regarded as non-responsive. Uh, the report containing the list of potential subcontractors may be drawn by accessing the following link. So that is the link that you, you can access uh, other companies that are registered on CSD. But we are not limited to that link. There are so many companies that you know as the uh, prospective service provider. So you can use all mechanisms that you have in your place. You can use all the resources that you have in your place to get all these subcontractors. So here we're just leading you where you can get uh, these uh, uh, subcontractors. Uh, the next phase is mandatory requirement. So mandatory requirement is either you have or you don't have. So 
We are saying the following mandatory requirement will apply, and all bids that do not meet mandatory requirement will be disqualified and will not be evaluated further on functionality. Failure to comply with mandatory requirement will result on bid being non responsive or disqualified. So we are saying bidders are required to submit or attach a healthy and safety officer certificate. So the reason we are requesting this certificate, remember there is a service which is required for medical surveillance. So that service, it cannot just be rendered by anyone. The actor cannot just wake up and say, I'm going to render this particular service. So you need to have a certificate. So that is where the issue of joint venture comes in, where a project management company might not have this certificate. A supply and delivery company might not have this certificate. That is where you partner with other companies so that uh, you are able to have this uh, certificate. And then you will attach the certificate of the officer uh, who, who, who have this certificate. So I'm appealing to all of you, for companies that do not have this certificate, uh, make sure that you have it at the time when you submit your bid proposal, because if you don't have, you are going to be disqualified. So you can look at other arrangements like your joint venture, if Hector has, Hector can uh, form a joint venture with JAM, and then they will attach a certificate for Hector, and then you won't be disqualified. For functionality criteria, uh, we're saying only bid proposal, that means pre-compliance, pre-qualification, mandatory requirement, will be considered to be evaluated on functionality. If you are disqualified on pre-compliance, you won't proceed further. If you are disqualified on pre-qualification, you won't proceed further. If you are disqualified on mandatory requirement, you won't proceed fair. So it means you are disqualified there. So with the functionality criteria, we were saying the minimum score is 75. If you score to 74,9, we don't round it, round it. It means you are out. You need to score 75 or more. 75,9, you are out. 60%, you are out. 40%, you are out. 75,1 you are in, up to 100%. So we also have the values, the rating, that we are going to use to evaluate from 0 to 5. So I don't just look at your curriculum vitae or CV, and then so no, this CV, it doesn't have information, then I just dismiss it. I must go according to, to the values that are provided. So criteria number one, we have pro, proposed project plan, methodology and the management of the project. So I always say this is a free event mark because yeah, what we're asking you to do, we're saying present yourself to us. Give us a detailed project plan with intermediate final outputs and identify time frame milestone of the proposed methodology in the development of this project. So meaning that here you are just going to express yourself or how best are you going to do this job, giving us the, the time frame, the methodologies and so on. So if your methodology is well broken, you get a five. If there are clear milestone objectives, you get a four. If there are no deliverables and time frame, you get a three. And then if there is limited information on the Excel plan, you get a two. If you give us a project plan, but we can see that you didn't understand what we are testing, we'll give you one. Yes, there is a project plan, but you didn't understand, we'll give you one. And then if you didn't provide anything at all, there is no project plan, we'll give you a zero. And then we have a wait for 30. If you multiply 30 by zero, any number you multiply by zero is a zero. That means 30 is gone. So if you get a five, you multiply 30 by five then you are getting to somewhere. And then the next criteria is about the qualification. We're seeing certified copies of the qualification of the project manager to be assigned to the project. So relevant qualification in the areas of project management. So here we're targeting qualification for the project management. So we're not looking for any other qualification. Remember, people who render medical surveillance uh, those people, they also have their own qualification, but that qualification is covered there under monitor. So if you give us that certificate, uh, the department is fine with that. 
So the higher qualification that we are looking at is it's a degree. If you have a degree qualification in project management, you get a five. If you have a diploma, you get a four. Uh, a three-year diploma, you get a four. A two-year diploma, you get a three. One-year certificate, you get a two. A six-month certificate, you get a one. If there's no qualification attached, you get a zero. Remember, we said certified copies. If those copies are not certified, uh, whether it's a PhD, it's a master's, you are going to get zero. Please make sure you certify your qualification so that you don't lose out marks unnecessary. So we could have said a PhD is a five, master's is a four, honors is a three. But we know there are some uh, imaging companies that are still coming in the industry. So we didn't want to throw them out. And we are starting at a degree level. And then the next criteria, uh, just before I can move on to the next criteria, we are only going to request qualification for the project leader or team leader. So the project leader and team leader might have the key personnel that he or she is going to work with, but we are only going to assess the qualification. So if the project leader has so many qualifications, we are going to look at the highest qualification. If he has a, a, an honors and a degree, then we will score for, for honors. And then... Uh, okay, members, um, on this specific point, um, I want to make it clear to you that when we are doing evaluations, we often come across it where bidders are not clear on who is the project manager. Um, so please, when you complete this, be clear to specify who is the project manager so that we are aware who we need to evaluate. Because you might find that you are attaching five different CVs. And out of the five, we are not sure who is the project manager. Make sure to clearly indicate that this is going to be my project manager. We will be running with this. Thank you. Thank you, Jack, for that. Uh, the next criteria is uh, it's a uh, we are going to assess the technical capability expertise and the track record of the project manager to be assigned to the project in labor compliance and related issues. So here we're going to look at the experience of the project leader or the team leader. So we are saying experience of project manager in the areas of labor relation issues, community works projects, labor related in particular. So we are saying if the project leader or team leader has a five years or more experience, you get a five. If it's four years experience and less than five years experience, you get a four. Three years and less than uh, four years experience, you get three. Two years and less than three years experience, you get a two. One year and less than two years experience, you get zero. If there is no experience at all, then you get a zero. So, Many companies here, yeah, they lose marks unnecessary. You might have the, the team leader who has a, a massive experience, but that information is not uh, presented on the curriculum vita. So I'm appealing to all bidders, make sure that on your curriculum vita indicate the experience, number of years, project description, so that when the department is evaluating, they can see that uh, Dumisan uh, he has five years experience from this uh, years to this year. And then they are able to determine whether this experience is more than five or less than five. But if there is no, no years, then we are able to tell uh, whether uh, they, uh, this project manager or, or this project leader uh, has a uh, five years experience or one year experience. So we can assume because if I score a five and there is no number of years, AG will ask for you, where is this five coming from? Because there are no years that are indicated. So it means it looks like the department is pushing certain companies. So if there is no number of years indicated against the project that are listed, then you will get zero. So I'm appealing to all prospective sales provider to detail your CV so that you don't lose the marks unnecessary. The last criteria 
Uh, it's about company experience, track record, and knowledge in the field of labor or community work. So we are saying five or more successful completed projects with five signed positive reference letters. So the difference here with the 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 the, the, the criteria where we're evaluating the the project leader. Here we're looking at the number of projects. So if five projects were successfully completed and there are reference letters that support those projects, you get a five. If it's four projects with reference letters, you get a four. And the trick here, you might have a project that is running. Sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, so I was saying the trick here, you might have a, a contract which is still running, but remember that project is not yet successfully completed. So we don't count that one. We only count successfully completed project. And there must be reference letter. Those reference letters must be signed by the project manager you were working with when you render that services. And those reference letters, they must be on the letterhead of the company that the service was rendered. So Hector cannot just come with a reference letter and say, no, I have done a surveying project. This project was successful, successfully completed. But there is no logo where Hector is claiming that uh, this is where service was rendered. So you will get zero. So if it's one successful completed project, we sign positive reference letter, you get a one. Then it goes like that. And then the minimum score of already indicated is 75. And on, on, on the last column, you can see we have a weight. So those weights, weight, they will amount to 100. So if you get total, each and every criteria are getting five, you'll get a maximum of 500. And then there's a formula that we use to come back to 100. And then depending on the scores that you get, some there will be 875, 85, 95, 80, 61, 14, and so on. So it will depend on the scores that the company scores. So I'm appealing to all prospective service provider, please submit details, curriculum return. Don't assume our department will know. We won't know. We need to see it on the curriculum return. So some of you, you might have worked in the department for the past 20 years. Then because you were working with Hector, Hector knows that you have 20 years experience. But if it's not on the CV, Hector is going to score you zero because we must evaluate against what is uh, the document saying, not what I know. We are not going to use what I know. We are going to use the information from the tender document and evaluate according to the criteria. So the last phase of the evaluation is the preference point system. So I indicated earlier on when I talk about SBD 6.1, we are going to use 90.10. So what does 9010 mean? It means any procurement from 50 million to unlimited. It can be billion, trillion, millions. So 9010 range from 50 million upward. So that is where 9010 comes in. So if it was 8020, it means uh, our procurement is going to range from 30,000, but not exceeding uh, uh, 50 million rand. But in this case, it's 9010. It range from 50 million to unlimited. So there's the table. Uh, if you remember, I did indicate your level one get 10 points, level two get nine points, level three six points, up to level eight that gets one point. And then if there is no certificate or a certificate is non-compliant, you get a zero. So here's the challenge, prospective sales provider. I'm also appealing to you here. Yeah. Some of you. You print from CIPC certificate. Those certificates is fine. You print, you don't certify it. Treasury does not allow you to certify anymore. You print it as it is, so it must it must, it should indicate the B status level of contributor. We need to see the validity of that certificate, and then you get all your points. If you are a level four, you get your five points. But the challenge is with the companies that uh, obtain. Uh, son of David, it's a serious challenge, colleagues. 
So I'm appealing to all of you. That is where you lose out the points. And the way we're pre-qualifying using the the triple B is where most companies were disqualified. So here's the issue. Prospective sales provider. The certificate, the son of David, it needs to be signed by both the deponent and the commission of all. And the commission of all must put the signature and the date. If there is no date, you are son of David, we cannot confirm the validity of that uh, certificate uh, or that, that son of David. So make sure before you leave the commission of all to check that he or she wrote the date. Because if there is no date, the certificate is not valid. Because the last clause before, that's before the commission of all side, it says that certificate is validity. It's, it's depending on the date that the commissioner of all signs. So if there's no date, then we can validate that certificate. And then there are other information which is required, like the financial year, just indicate whether it's 20, 2020, 2021, 2018, 2019. We are not specific in terms of the financial year. Just declare that information so that your son of David uh, is not rendered invalid, so that you don't lose the point. So the deponent must sign and put a date. Commission of us must sign and put a date. Then you will get all the points. So I'm appealing to all service providers. And Sonal David, it does not need to be certified. You can submit a copy of that Sonal David, you will get all the points, as long as it's compliant. Or you can give us original of the Sonal David, you will get all the points. Same way with the triple B certificate, it needs to be original indicate your B status level of contributor, then you'll get all the points. You are not required to, to certify that certificate. Treasury have discontinued the certification of B certificate last year in August. So just make a copy. You can keep your original and submit the copy. You'll get all the points. You won't be disqualified. You'll get all the points. So I think Jack want to come in there. Um, thank you, members. Something else that I want to draw your attention to. Please, a lot of people lose all their points on this thing and it is a very stupid uh, omission. Whenever you do your sworn affidavit, please make sure that your date and the commissioner's date correspond. If they do not correspond, we cannot take your, your sworn affidavit. Also, then, um, if it is commissioned by a police officer, we do need the service number. It must be indicated there. Um, say, for instance, you use a chartered accountant, we need the full address of the chartered accountant as well. So, this is small things that you need to take a look at. If you get a BEE certificate, make sure that you use a company that is SANAS accredited. Without that, we can also not uh, use your BEE certificate. Now you can be sure of that. It will have, a, usually it's a BBA number, correct, Victor? And then you can also go by yourselves and you can verify that on Sanas's website to make sure that this company is accredited to give you that certificate. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jack, for that. So we are continuing with our presentation. So 8.5.2 as in the points scored by the tenderer in respect of the level of the B contribu uh, contribution contemplated in sub-regulation sub 7.2 must be added to the points scored for price as calculated in accordance with sub-regulation 7.1 respectively. So what we are saying, the points that you scored on BE, they will be added on the price for, 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 on the points for, for, for price. So I, I did indicate it earlier on to say, if you are the cheapest, you are going to get 90. So if you are the cheapest in Pumalanga, you will get 90. If you are also bidding in, in free state, and the test is the cheapest, you will get 90. So there are chances that the actor might get 90 in all the provinces. But the actor might lose 
to get the end of the province, even though it's cheaper because Hector did not submit son of David. Other companies will overtake him because those companies, they submitted their B certificate. One company might be behind by one point from Hector because their price are close to each other. So the tricky uh, prospective sales provider, the, 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 the formula to calculate the point, the higher you charge, the lesser the point you get. So that is how treasury designed it. So that is how it works. So I'm gonna jump to the bid submission requirement. The bidder should ensure that the following submission requirement will be needed for evaluation purposes and are included in the bid proposals as follows. Service provider must draft a table of content which, which uh, indicate where the document is located in the proposal. The profile of the company and the description of similar work undertaken. Proposal shall consist of one original bid document and must clearly indicate the prices on SBD 3.3 and pricing schedule. The information in the curriculum vitae or CV of the pro pro proposed team leader should include relevant past experience in the chosen area of expertise. A project reference specifies the role played by the sales provider in the listed projects or assignment. A detailed project plan with a clear indication of who will be responsible for the management of the assignment as well as, the, uh, as, well as its execution. The allocation of team members on the assignment should be based on the experience in delivering the scope of work as listed. Uh, standard bidding documents with SBD 1, 3.3, 4, 6.1, 8, and 9, the one that I presented in it, should be fully completed and signed. Copy of central supplier database, it should be attached in your company, uh, in, in your bid proposal. So the reason we want you to submit the copy, very, very important. You'll find that the, on CSD, there is Hector 1, there is Hector 2, there is Hector 3, there is Hector 4, there is Hector 17. So you see, all these companies are Hectors, but they differ because other Hector is 1, other Hector is 5, other Hector is 17. So for us as the department not to make a mistake, uh, printing the correct, the, 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 the correct CSD, we request you to attach your own CSD so that when we verify, we use your MA correct number. Because if it's a Hector, Hector 5 submitted, and there is no CV, then we print Hector 1, a copy of CSD. We might get it wrong. And so we are appealing to all of you to submit uh, your copy of the central supplier database. So even if you don't submit it, but if you can write the MA number, maybe somewhere in SBD1, then we are fine. But you won't be disqualified for not submitting a copy of a CSD. Uh, these are the special condition of the contract. So we're saying performance measures of the project to supply, deliver, and offload the tools of trade, render project management services and medical surveillance will be closely monitored by the project manager. So all the service providers who will be successful uh, across the country, they will be working closely with the project manager. So the project manager, they will know the project manager when they are signing the service level agreement. And then, uh, 10.2, service provider will submit bi-monthly reports to the program manager within four days after the end of each month for the duration of the project. Failure to submit the required reports on time will result in penalties. The reports to be presented at least three uh, project advisory committee meetings. So very, very important. These are the reports that uh, you will be required to submit bi-monthly. So please make sure that those will be successful submit those reports so that they don't charge you penalties. So the project manager, when you send the service level agreement, uh, will give you uh, detailed information regarding uh, these reports and how it works and how you should do them. 10.3, uh, service provider must guarantee the presence of a senior in charge of field, field work throughout the duration of the contract. Prior to the appointment of, of a replacement, the program manager must approve such a, a appointment. Uh, in the, if the senior has to lead the project, a, pro, a period of at least a month is required in which the senior must work parallel with the next person. Senior consultant with similar expertise 
and equally years of experience appointed to be able to transfer skills and knowledge. So what we are saying here, it might happen that at the time when you bid, uh, you, pre you presented Errol uh, as your project manager, because Errol manager has a degree, Errol, man uh, Errol has a massive experience, and Errol makes you to pass functionality. So we are saying, when you implement the project, we want to see Errol implementing the project because Errol is the one who makes you to pass functionality. But it might happen that Errol maybe is going to somewhere or is going to be committed somewhere. So you are no longer going to have the service of Errol. So we are saying when such uh, changes happen, you need to, to engage with the project manager about these changes. And then the project manager should grant that approval to say, yes, Errol can leave uh, because there is nothing we can do. But there is a, there is a, a period of at least a month where Errol and the new project manager, Oscar, they must work parallel for at least a period of a month so that Errol can share with the new project manager other information that uh, maybe the new project leader might want to know. So we are saying such project manager must have the same qualification as Errol, same experience as Errol. So you don't bring a person with one year experience, whereas the department evaluated someone with 15 years experience. So we are guarding against the risk where the project won't move, the department won't perform when we are no longer achieving that project. And then money will have to be surrendered to National Treasure. Uh, 10.4, the department will not be held responsible for any cost in case by the same provider in the preparation, presentation, and submission of the proposal. So under the costing, I did uh, mention that there are costs that will be involved. Some, some of you, you might fly from Deben, Cape Town, Limpopo, just to come and submit the bid proposals. Uh, some of you will travel maybe using the cars, you will have to pour petrol, pay the toll gate, and so on. So we are saying those costs, uh, it's the responsibility of the bidder. So you need to take into consideration those costs uh, so that you don't come to the department and say, no, I, I pay uh, five toll gates, I need my money back. So those costs, are uh, uh, incurred by the service provider. The project manager shall do the ongoing management of the service level agreement. So meaning that throughout the duration of the contract, the project manager will be monitoring the service level agreement. Uh, all the conditions specified in the general condition of contract will apply and where the condition in the special condition of contract contradicts the condition in the general condition of contract. The special condition of contract will prevail. So in a case where the GCC contradicts the special condition, it means the special condition of contract will prevail. So it's clear there. And then the next clause was saying the copy of central supplier database or such text status pin must be submitted together with your bid proposal. So as I indicated earlier, if you don't submit your copy of CSD, we might get the MA wrong. So if you give us the copy of the CSD, we are able to download the correct CSD. So that if we are saying a uh, JAG's text matters are not in order, then that CSD belongs to JAG. And then copy of the registration of, for compensation for professional injuries and disease act, COIDA, letter, or valid certificate. So at the time that you are going to be you might not have this COIDA certificate, but at the time, if you are successful, at the time when you are going to sign the contract, uh, you need to bring the COIDA certificate or a letter. So we used to put it under mandatory requirement in the past, and then we realized that uh, sometimes we are, de we are disadvantaging other service providers. And we are putting it under special condition to say, let's allow them to be it, but at the time of contracting, that is where we require this certificate or a letter. And then 10.9, proof of compliance certificate with the Department of Labor for Unemployment Insurance Fund, UIF, or a letter from the Department of Labor uh, explaining the status and must not be older than 90 days from the closing date. So same principles is also applying here. So at the time of bidding, you might not have the UIF certificate or a letter. So if you are successful at the time when you are signing the service level agreement, we are going to require this certificate. So, meaning that 
during the, 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 the process of bidding and, and so on, then you will be able or you will have enough time to go to apply for the letter or the certificate. 10.10, .10, letter of authority to sign documents on behalf of the company. Uh, I did indicate earlier on, and Jack also uh, emphasized on SBD1 to say, there's a template there or there's a portion where you can sign. So I'm appealing to all of you to sign uh, this uh, letter of authority to sign the document. 10.11. The proposal should be submitted with all required information containing technical information. So all information uh, that are required, please make sure that they are submitted with the bid proposal. Because once the tender close, we are not going to allow any bidder to add any other information or to submit any other information after the close. Otherwise, we are going to be unfair to other bidders and will be uh, violating section 217 which require us to be fair to all service providers. It does fail to meet pre-compliance, pre-qualification, mandatory requirement, functionality scores will automatically be disqualified. Uh, I will jump this clause. I will go straight to the subcontracting condition. I have talked about the joint venture and its requirement. So joint venture, you can come up with uh, two part in two parties or three parties, five parties, but you must have one consolidated B certificate. So I'm not going to repeat that. And I indicated that you need to sign SBD 6.1. You must fully complete it and sign so that you don't forfeit your B code. And then poor or non-performance by the bidder will result in cancellation of works uh, orders. So if you are not performing prospective sales provider, the department may cancel the, 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 the project or the contract. So the, the, the project manager, if you are not performing, he or she will engage you uh, trying to find a way so that uh, you perform. But if you continue not to perform, a department will reach a point where they will terminate the contract. So 10.17, we're saying there will be skills transfer to youth environmental coordinators. So the project manager will be able to provide this, uh, this use uh, so that they can work with the company which are successful so that you transfer the skills to these uh, young people. But that information will be provided by the project manager. Subcontracting condition. Uh, I, I spoke about it earlier on where we're saying you will be required to subcontract 30% portion of the work, and then this portion of the work you are going to subcontract to the EME or KSE, which are at least 51 owned by black people who are youth, women, and people with disability. So I already spoke uh, about this under the pre qualification, so I'm not going to waste uh, much time on it. And then uh, the clause are just repeating. Uh, uh, yeah, I think I talk about uh, all these clause 11.2, 11.3, 11.4. So I'm not going to to waste your time repeating them. Uh, item number 12, paragraph number 12. The department undertakes to pay out in full or as per the deliverables within 30 days all valid claims for work done to its satisfaction upon presentation of a substantiated claims and the required reports stipulated in the special condition. No payments will be made where there is an outstanding information or work not submitted by the sales provider until that outstanding information is submitted. So what we are saying here, we are saying, if you rendered the service and there are no disputes, a project manager is happy with the work, the department will be able to pay your invoice within 30 days. But if there's dispute, 30 days doesn't apply. So it means we must sort out the dispute first. And then once the dispute has been resolved, then you submit your claims, then the department will pay. So our technical inquiries, uh, we have with Tumelo, the one who was presenting before me, there's their details, uh, contact telephone numbers and the email. We also have Errol Baloy, uh, there is also his telephone numbers, cell phone numbers, and his email. So you can always send us email 
you can phone us and then we'll be able to respond back to you. Uh, Jack, if you can go to the first page. I want to finalize on the, uh, the, the, the first page. Uh, prospective sales providers, uh, this tender will close on the 11th of March 2022 at 11 o'clock. Very, very important. If you arrive at 11 o'clock, one second, you are late. 11 o'clock, five seconds, you are late. 11 o'clock, 45 seconds, you are late. One past 11, you are late. Anything after 11 o'clock, you are late. Your proposals will not be considered for evaluation. So some of you, even if you are late, you will refuse to take your proposal back. So yes, we can take your proposal, but it won't be considered because you are late. So I'm appealing to you to avoid submitting your proposals on the last day of the closing of the tender, because you might not know what happened on the road. We are living in a country where I can wake up and then tomorrow they think there's protests on the road where the roads are blocked or all flights are cancelled. If you are flying from Cape Town, they say all flights from Cape Town today due to weather are cancelled. So you won't be able to fly to Johannesburg and, uh, and submit your bid proposal. So I'm appealing to all of you, submit on time, three days before the tender close, two days before the tender close, so that nothing should prevent you to submit uh, your bid proposal. So if you are late, your tender will not be considered. 11 o'clock on the 11th of March. Uh, the other thing that I want to raise after that, Jack will come in. You might know Hector in the department. And then you give your proposal to Hector. Hector forget to drop it in the tender, uh, tender box. Hector went to his desk, he keep it in his drawer. At 11 o'clock, when supply chain closed the tender, your tender is not in the bid box. Your tender won't be considered. Whether you gave it to Hector, you gave it to the CFO of the department, to the accounting officer of the department, any other officials in the department, the policy says your tender document must be at the bid box on the date that is prescribed on the advert and the time. So it doesn't matter who you gave, your bid proposal should be in the bid box. Some of you use career guides. Please make sure after you submit your bid proposal, please make sure that the career guides, they confirm that indeed they submit on time. Okay, Jack. Um, members, this is very important. We do get disputes of bids that may, uh, Potential bidders indicate that they have submitted their bids. However, when we go back, there is no record of it. Even if you are using a courier, make sure that you rather post, send it a day before the closing so that it is there in time. Even if you are using a courier, it must be registered in the bid received register. Without that, we don't have any record and your bid will not be accepted. Make sure there is different boxes at the entrance. There is a bit for adver uh, advertisement of posts. Um, there is one for bursaries. So please make sure that you put it in the correct box. If it is not in the correct box, it will not be accepted because it won't be there by the closing time. So make sure of all of this when you are submitting your bid. Thanks. A prospective sales provider will just zoom in on the pricing schedule. So we'll just take you one pricing schedule for one provinces. So they all uh, they are all the same. They only differ in terms of the quantities. So as I indicated earlier on, on top of the pricing schedule, we have our SBD 3.3. So write your name there, where it says name of the bidder. Because sometimes it does happen, the, 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 the binding that you use, then it's loosened up, and then the, your document falls apart. Then we are able to know this pricing schedule is for who. 
Because some of you, what we notice, you submit your documents and buy it, <laughs> but we don't disqualify you for that. But uh, chances are that uh, your documents might not be in order. So please write it there so that we are able to know that this pressing schedule belongs to Emily, this one belongs to Errol, this one belongs to, to Jack. And then we will place it uh, with the correct uh, tender document. So our next year is our pricing schedules. Uh, so this one is for Eastern Cape. So under Eastern Cape, we have a number of participants, which are 1,680. And then the rate per day is 120. And then total amounts for six months is 26 million, as you can see. And then under employment insurance, UIF, and then we have 500,000, 32,424. You can scroll down. Compensation for personal injuries and diseases, Act, uh, which is CUIDA, when we have a total of 266,112 rand. And then under the tools, uh, as you can see, uh, SV Tumela presented you uh, through the, 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 the tools. So those are the tools that uh, are required by the department. We provided quantities. So these quantities, they differ per provinces, but the, the, the tools are the same across the country. The only difference is the number of the quantities. And then you are going to give us the rate, which exclude VAT, and then you will give us the total amount excluding the VAT. So if you can scroll down here. And then there is a portion where you are going to give us a VAT, and then you will give us the total amount uh, inclusive of the VAT. And then uh, under the storage, we said storage for tools of trade, and then we said six quantities, and then you will give us unit price, total amount excluding VAT, and then you will give us VAT, and then you will give us the total amount inclusive of VAT. And then other project related costs, then you will specify. And then you will provide the unit price until you give us the total amount inclusive of that. And then uh, occupational health and safety, OHS, uh, number of participants is 1,680. Then you provide the unit price, total amount excluding VET, and then the VET amount as well as the total amount inclusive of VET. And then you will also have the SHE rep. The quantity is 280, then you will provide your unit price up to the total amount inclusive of that. And then under first aid, you have 280, and then you will provide your unit price up to the total amount, including a uh, amount with uh, inclusive of that. And then uh, that is all under the province. So the, the quantities will differ per province as we indicated earlier on, but the required information is the same. So as I indicated earlier on, when I'm going to hand over back to the chairperson, uh, you are going to submit one tender document. If you are bidding for all nine provinces, I'm appealing to you to complete all annexures, a pricing schedule for all nine provinces. If you are bidding for two provinces, complete only for those two provinces that you are going to, to bid. But if there is no price, we are not going to be able to evaluate you. Please make sure that your pricing schedule is fully completed, it's having the price so that the department will be able to, to evaluate you. So I'm appealing to all of you, one tender document, and then you tick the provinces that you are going to bid, and then you complete the annexures uh, that are uh, falling under the province that you are going to, to bid. So thank you very much, prospective service provider, and thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Just before I hand over to the chair, just want to come in. Thank you. Um, thank you, members. As you will see here on the first part of the pricing schedule, you will see that there is a stipend, there's unemployment, there's COIDA, and then you will have a total there. Now, this cost is merely indicative for you as a prospective bidder. This should not form part of your, of your bid price. This is going to be paid by the department, so please do not include this as part of your bid price. Thank you. Uh, just before Chairperson, I see Errol's hand is up. Uh, let's allow Errol to come in and then uh, 
then we'll hand over back to the chairperson before we can allow questions from prospectives and provide error. The floor is yours. Thanks, Hector, and, and thanks, Jack. I think Jack covers what I wanted to say, that uh, the amount for UIF and COIVA and the wages or stipends are going to be paid by the department. And in line with that, I also want to respond to the guy from Lipombo who said the, there was a problem with the to total there. So I wanted to say, does it have any implication from, from their costing? So that amount is the one that is paid by the department. So, I mean, what they what they going to pay? If you go down, if you can go down, a bit on this spreadsheet. I want to show them something. So if you if you if can you go a little bit down where you you adding the the totals, you will see you don't add those uh, uh, first first uh, budgets, which is a uh, wages or stipends and the UIF. You only adding other ones that you need to to cost for yourself. So so that that doesn't have implication on, in terms of how they're going to feel. I wanted also to respond to him because he raised a, a question earlier with regard to that. I think it might be maybe a, a mistake, but I mean that amount. Yeah, yeah. If you check, I mean, where what what you costing for is the tools of trade. Those, those lists that I mean, Tomele has highlighted other project related cost, which includes your storage for for tools and equipment for the duration of the project, which is six months, non corporate training. Uh, which includes your basic occupational health and safety, your first aid and she rep, uh, based on the numbers provided above, and then your pre and medical and, and exit medical surveillance, your project management fee, and then here you have the total. So your total that you reflect here is what you're charging as a department. And if you look into this, uh, here you only add uh, E, F, G, H, and I. So the A, B, C, D, that's the that, that's the department so it doesn't have an implication on your on your costing you only costing for this thank you um thank you Errol, for that clarification then also um we had a question earlier where someone requested can they bid for a specific part of this bit um the answer I, to that is uh, uh, Errol? It's, it's fine. I, I, I wanted to say Hector already responded to that, and you also touched on that to say you can't. I mean, you only yeah. you have to bid for the whole province, not partial. You can't choose that I want to do medicals, or, or I want to do uh, supply the, the the tools only. If you choose the proper province, you do everything within that province. That's how it's structured. Thanks. I just wanted to emphasize that. Um, as we had a lot of members joining after that discussion, I just wanted to clarify to each one. The bid must be costed in total per province. Uh, we will not award per item. Thank you. Uh, thank you, maybe, Errol. Thank you, Jack. Yeah, OK, Errol, come in. So, so, so like maybe before before you end it to the, to the chairperson, I just want to emphasize something that you raised. I mean, when it comes to assigned project manager. I've, I've been evaluating a lot of bids. I uh, can testify to this. I've, I've noted that some of the people are like, I don't know, it's, a, it's the owner of the company or the director. And then he put himself as a project uh, a, a team leader or project manager. And then when you look into his qualification, he's got PhD, but in a relevant qualification. And when you look into the other team members, you've got person who's got qualification that you're looking for. But because he specified that, I am the team leader or I'm, I'm the project leader. We only, we're not going to look into, even if we see that, I mean, there's Hector there, who's got qualification that we want. But because you said, because you think you are the owner of the company, you should be the project leader. If you say, I am at all the project leader and you don't have the relevant qualification, even if there's someone who's got a uh, 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 same qualification that we're looking for, we'll be looking to you as a project leader. So it's, it's very critical and very wise to put a project leader with the relevant qualification as per terms of reference, so that I mean, it will help us in terms of scoring. I mean, uh, scoring when we we're doing the evaluation. Thanks. Um, okay, members. Uh, I also alluded on this. So just to be to be hundred percent sure, on the CV for your project manager, indicate this is your person who is the project manager. So there can be no doubt in who is the actual project manager. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jack, and thank you, Errol. 
for that information. So I hope our prospective sales providers, uh, you are taking notes on what makes you to lose points are necessary. So please, please uh, make sure that uh, what Errol has, has been raising and Jack and what Mitumel uh, also presented and myself, uh, you make sure that you comply so that uh, you don't lose points or you get uh, disqualified unnecessary. So, Chairperson, uh, back to you so that we can take questions from uh, our prospective sales providers. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hector, and, and thanks to, to everyone who made a contribution. Um, colleagues, I, I believe it's clear now. We just had to um, leave it open for colleagues to um, guide um, you um, in as far as their challenges when we evaluate the, 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 the proposals. I think one thing that I need to emphasize on my side, um, um, Hector and colleagues, is that when, when we evaluate some of these uh, uh, documents, you realize that there's no distinction between a company experience and the experience of individuals. Um, so a lot of people tend to lose a lot of opportunity um, in, in, in that sense because you, you, you need to be clear. You need to, to say for the company, this is the number of years. Sometimes write it down, separate to say, now I'm talking about the company, this is the experience and these are the letters which indicate um, um, our experience if it's, if it's five years. Um, and, and, and the same applies to the individuals that have been hired or are part of the research um, team or the project team, um, I mean. Um, so there should be that distinction. We've, we've been suffering um, a lot um, on, on, on that note. Having said that, I think it's it's time now to open for um, uh, uh, questions, um, especially to those questions that were not um, well um, uh, clarified or or issues that were never discussed and you feel are critical. There's a a, a, a hand from Vusani. Um, you can shoot Vusani. Oh, okay, so thank sorry, you. Sorry, Busan. Uh, just before Busan come in, uh, before you start, you can just uh, introduce the company you represent, and then you can come with your question. Thank you. Thanks, Hector. Okay, my name is Busani. Uh, I'm representing my company, which is Ryan Talak and Varo Engine Scientific Research Institute. Uh, I've got a couple of questions, but they are so much very linked. Uh, number one, uh, 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 what happens, you, you were talking about the experience, right? So, uh, I mean, the, the quali what if you've got a qualification that maybe that project management was part of your curriculum? No, it, it's not really a qual qualification, it's not really specific project management. Let's say it's, 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 it's engineering related. It might be mechanical engineering. It might be, but we're doing research and we're managing, managing projects there. So what if that, 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 that could disqualify you because your project management was part of the curriculum? And then the other thing is that in terms of the experience, you, you're talking about the references. What if the company that you once worked in, the person of the company passed away and there's no one else? who can maybe, maybe the company was dissolved. So what happens? Uh, the other thing, uh, I wanted to, to, to know the pricing schedule. Does it have to be separate from the uh, tender document? Uh, and then the last question relates to the project management fees. You didn't specify how, you, how we structure our project management fees there in the, in the, in the, in the in section I of the pricing. So that would be all, all of my questions. Um, thanks, Hector. Do you want another question or you want to respond to this one? Uh, we can take maybe uh, the the last two hands. There is uh, Jonathan and then there is uh, Le Shavi. We can take them and then we can answer after that. Okay, let's take Jonathan then. Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Jonathan Desova, representing Tukasa Services. 
Um, like Vusan, I also have a couple of questions. Um, the first one is relating to the with the tender document states uh, you have to put in the put in a kilometer rate for waste removal. Uh, where should that kilometer rate be inserted into that tender document? Then also, in regards to the to the to the transportation, local participants who will, will be working at local towns will they be needed to transport to uh, clearing sites? And if they need to be transported to clearing sites, would that that also then fall under your kilometer rate? Then the second question I have is whether you have the list of participants or the amount of participants that would work on projects, but whether those participants would work without supervision or whether the, or whether the project management company should put in supervisors for each team, say, say if your local municipality has 60 participants, then I would presume that 60 participants would be split. If there's three towns in that municipality, 20 per town, but then would that team say, need supervision? Um, the following question is on the subcontracting. Uh, should the BE certificate or affidavit for the subcontractor also be included in the bid uh, to verify that they do um, they do have that 51% black owned uh, companies? Then I just need clarification on the health and safety uh, officer certificate. Is that a medical practitioner certificate that you guys want there? Is it a health and safety representative certificate or exactly what health and safety certificate do you guys need need there? And I think that you guys almost gave me an answer for, to this question, and I just want to ask it again. Uh, if you run a project, but you have two project managers and you stipulate it like that in your contract, that that's two uh, project managers, the one has 15 years worth of EPWP project management experience and the other one has a degree. Would that be acceptable as, as such or would only the one person's qualification or the one person's experience be be taken into account? So if you stipulated those, that's the two project managers. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, there's um, last question, I, but I'm, I no longer see the hand. Um, okay, maybe, I'm here. Oh yes, please proceed. Um, the, the name and your name and the name of your organization. Okay, my name is Refilio. I'm representing a company called Lutabile Training and Skills Development. And my question is based on the company experience. You made mention that you want projects that are completely, 100% complete. But what I want to find out is that if you are awarded a, proje a project that is running for three years, but it works according to phases, maybe it's phase one to phase three, and you have already completed phase one and phase two, they are closed. You are now running the last phase. Would you consider the first two phases as completed or would you want it to be a three-year project completion? Thank you. Thank you. Um, Hector and um, colleagues, um, maybe Hector, you can start with, with some of the questions and other colleagues could assist. Thank you. Um, thank you, members. Um, Dumistani, let's go to the first one. Um, what will happen when a three-year project has different phases? Um, this is now with your uh, concurrence. I think if they've got uh, completion certificates for each of the different phases, I think that will be acceptable, but that is up to you as the project manager. To be sorry. Um, I, yeah. Okay, what I've been saying is, if the project is for three years and it is being completed by phases, um, I think it will be acceptable to accept if they've got a closeout report for each of the phases. 
but that is up to you as the project manager. Oh yes, yes, that that's that's true. Uh, yeah. As soon as there's um, um, something that is written um, to say we participated in this uh, project and here's a, a, a proof or a letter from the project or program manager at that time indicating that we've delivered um, the, the service from this stage to uh, that stage, then that is, that is acceptable. Uh, thanks, Jack. Okay, thanks, Chair. If I may come in to try and answer some question. Uh, so while I'm answering some of the question, I think some question, uh, if we tumel or error can come in. Uh, there was a question uh, regarding the, the, the participant, and then there was a question regarding the, the transport, and then there was a question regarding the structure of uh, project management. So if they can assist with those ones, uh, then I will be trying to answer some of the question, and then if I miss, uh, Jack or Emily will come in. So there was a question from Vusani, uh, where he was indicating he did a, a project management, but not as a as a qualification, but as a as a course or a subject. So in terms of the criteria that we we, we put on the terms of reference, uh, we are looking at the qualification. So meaning that uh, if it's not a qualification, uh, uh, the, the bidder is going to lose the point. So we're not looking at a, a curriculum or a subject or a course. We're looking at a qualification. So it's either a degree or a diploma, a certificate, a master's degree, a PhD, and so on, then you will be able to score point. But what I can advise to Vusani, uh, you still have an opportunity to, 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 to form the joint venture, or you still have an opportunity to have someone who's having qualification to put that person as a project leader, and then you will be able to, to get the, the point. So it depends on who do you want to work with, or what arrangement you want to have uh, in the bidding. And then uh, there was also a question from uh, Vusani. Hector, Hector. Yes. Hector. Before yes, you continue, now, what yes. I'm saying is that I've got, I've got a PhD in chemical engineering. I was doing research. So that is project management. Doesn't in make me to be, to be suitable to, 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 to be considered for, for points. No, no. What we, we don't want to use equivalent or anything. It becomes difficult when you evaluate. We want qualification as stated on the terms of reference. We, we have a challenge where you have to do been challenged or you have to cancel a I mean, project because you are complicating the requirements. So the requirements are, are strict. It's either certificate or diploma or degree or, 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 or honors or PhD because we don't want to go through academic records of people and check if you if you, you want to do the a, a project okay. management in your academic record. So we're saying project management qualification as they did, because I'm telling you, it, it, it becomes difficult. We don't want to pay through the academic records and say, no, there is a part year of, uh, of qualification of project management. So we want those qualifications. As the director is advised, it's either you recruit or you, you, you partner with the people who've got qualification with regard to that. Remember, we are, we, are, we are also audited by the Auditor General, and even before that, we need to submit to our bid uh, adjudication committee. And and when you get asked question, you, the question that you never you will never respond because one will say that's why we don't even use uh, equivalent because equivalent can be or relevant uh, or equi equivalent will be will be something else. Someone will say I've got one, two, three, four uh, is part of it. So hence we, we we are trying to be specific. Thanks. Okay, uh, Errol, let me just be, let me just be specific, now. <laughs> because it, what, what 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 I did was a research project, what, uh, masters and my PhDs. They were the specifically research pro, purely research project. So what, it was me. It was not somebody. It was just me doing that project. So is it that you that you, you can consider as project management? I need a certificate. Sorry. Sorry, colleagues. Um, Busi, oh, Busani, sorry. 
um, to come in here, what Errol is getting to is to say that we need a qualification in project management. We don't want a qualification in which you that the subject as project management. We want something purely on project management. Thank you. Um, are you clear, Dave Vusani? Yes, I'm very clear on that one. Okay. Um, you also had a question to say that what happens in the case where the project manager might pass away? So, in that instance, yeah, that is unforeseen circumstances. But what we need from you as a company then will be to say that as soon as a project manager passes away, so for instance, we scored you a five because your initial project manager had the highest qualification that we were doing on functionality. And then also that your project manager had say 15 years experience, so you also got the five day. So what we need from you in that instance is we need the project manager that if we have to score him, he will get a five on the qualification and he will also be able to get a five on the experience again. So that is what we are looking for. You need to replace him by someone that gave you the points that you got in your initial evaluation. Thank you. No, uh, thanks. No. Can, yes, can, I, can, I, can I can I just can I just Sorry, just, just there? Let me let me respond to you. I I I had your question, Wilson. I think you you wanted to, to you were asking one one question with regard to where the project manager or the company that you you once did the project for you can't get the, the reference letter. Yes. Maybe the the owner died. Yes. And fortunately, we're not gonna consider if there's no letter because remember we're not evaluating based on hearsay. We're evaluating based on the evidence provided. So if you couldn't submit the evidence or the letters, regardless of how, how what circumstances led you not to get those, we're not going to consider that they, the letters have to be there. Because, I mean, how, how are we going to know that indeed, I mean, you've done this? Because what needs to be presented is a document. So it's the signed letter with the letter aid and the signature. So if you don't have those in your document, it's, it's, it's unfortunate. We cannot consider that. It's, it's a requirement because I mean this document has to be presented to to the BAC and it has to be audited by the Auditor General. So we cannot say no. Yeah, we 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 gave them point because uh, the the company that they work for it was it was closed and they couldn't get a letter. How do we know that? Because the only thing that you will know is the it's based on the I mean it's based on the document submitted. Yes, thanks. Harold. Similarly, like, like similarly, like what 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 Hector was saying. I mean, we might know that you've done project within the department. I mean, we've seen that, but I cannot, even if I will, I, I'm part of BEC member, I won't say Vusani has done this project, I know he has done it. If you didn't put there, I mean, even if we know that you, you've, you, you've done 20 projects within the department, if you didn't bless them, we're not going to consider that because what, what do we, imagine if there's someone where's, who doesn't know you as a part of BEC. How, 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 why, why, why do I have to convince that person that no, he, I know this one has done it? He, I mustn't convince him. He must see the documents presented because we're evaluating based on the document presented, not based on the knowledge that I know that Vusani has done this for the department. No, it's not, it doesn't work like that. It's based on the documents submitted. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Um, Ero, thank you for that. Uh, Busani, yeah, sorry, you were breaking quite bad at some point. Um, you also had a question regarding on how you're going to cost for your project management fees. So if you take a look at the project management fees, um, it is very clearly broken down on point number I of the pricing schedule, where it shows you exactly where you need to cost. So I'm displaying it on the screen. So I think that will guide you, unless you still need some more clarification. I, I can I can even maybe clarify. On when we talk about on the first stage, what is the planning? Remember, you need to prepare a business plan, which is submitted uh, online in our system. So once we we accept the business plan, once you are appointed, you need to develop, put the business plan, which will be evaluated. Once we are we we accept it and it, it get approved you will get 
fifteen percent of what of 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 what your total cost of project management is, and then the other seventy percent will be uh, split into duration of the project. However, the fifteen percent will retain it as a retention fee, which you will only be paid when the project has been completed and you submitted the the, the closeout report with all the necessary document that will require for closeout process. Uh, thanks, Errol, for, 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 for the response. Uh, are you covered, Vusan? Uh, the last question was about the pricing schedule. Does it have to be separate from the from the tender document? OK, thank you. Yeah, I was going to respond to that one. Uh, uh, we said one bid document. So the pricing schedule should be inside your bid document. So we are no longer requesting or requiring a separate uh, envelope for the pricing. So it should be one document. So we are no longer separating the bid proposals and the pricing. So it's one document. Is that clear, Sam? Yeah, I'm very much clear. OK, thank you. I... Yes, Ed Aaron. All right, I want to, to, to respond to some of the questions that were asked. Uh, with regard to, uh, there's a guy, gentleman, who asked about the transport cost for clearing, clearing if the participants are going to the sites, who caters for it. So they, they don't cost for transportation of the participants to the site for, for site clearance or for waking. Uh, this is an EPWP. Uh, we already uh, discussed with the municipality that they need, if they are appointing 20 per town in, in their local municipality, they need to appoint people that reside adjacent to the project because we don't want to incur the cost for the for the for the for the for, for the transportation of these participants to and from the site on a daily basis. So they don't have to 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 transport that to cost for that. And then in terms of the kilometer rate, because we didn't know exactly which municipality will require this service. So they will indicate on the on the SDBD 3.3 to say this is the rate so that we know when when we are when they are appointed because we don't want them to say it's 50 rand after the appointment. So that rate just an indication to say this is the rate per kilometer so that we know that I mean if we were transporting for 50 k or for 5 k uh, that, that this is this will be the would this would be the rate. And then again in terms of supervision. I mean, we we've got uh, local government support and 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 white corps that they will be super supervising, assisting in the supervision. But the overall supervision of this uh, program lies with the service provider. But there will be official that will be assisting. But the overall lies with the service provider. So they need to allocate supervisors for those for those sites where these participants will be will be working. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Errol. Maybe just before. Uh, you can uh, stop. There is uh, another question. Uh, I think it's from Jonathan. Uh, he wanted to know the amount of participants to work on the project. If you can also touch on that one. The, the amount. No, remember what what the the the, the number of participants differ per province is there on the terms of reference. But let me give an example. If you're working in, 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 let me give an example. Okay, in a, in a, in a, this, in a, in a province where it's got, a, a, okay, let me take Tuane for example, because it's easier. Uh, sorry, sorry, Gauteng. If you're working in Gauteng, or you've been awarded for Gauteng, so in each and every metros, we've got three metros, so you'll have 120 participants in all those metros. And we've got, we've got about two districts with three local municipalities each. So in those three municipalities, there will be 60 per local municipality, which means in a district, they will, we will have 180, and then on other district, you will have 108. So if you work in a, in, a, in a district where you've got five local municipalities, so it's five by uh, 60, but I mean, remember the overall number is per province, but I'm just giving you an example. So it's 60 per local municipality, and then Metro is allocated 100, 100, 120. I'm not sure if 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 it's under, but and I've, I've seen a question on this chat where they're asking about the PPE of the participants. The PPE has been already procured by the department, so you don't have to cost for PPE. I've I've responded, but I've seen it also coming back on the chat. So the PPE 
department has already procured it. So you don't have to quote for PEE, PPE, I mean PPE. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Errol. I, I think the last question from Jonathan was about the certificate of the subcontractor for the BE. Yes, uh, Jonathan, the certificate for the subcontractors uh, you need to submit with your bid proposal. So if Emily and Witumelo are your subcontractors, uh, please also submit their B certificate or their son of David so that we, we can see uh, whether these companies are the EME or the uh, QSE. So that information is provided uh, on the B certificate or son of David. So you need to submit with your, uh, with your uh, bid proposals. So under Jonathan, I think we covered all the questions, but you can confirm, Jonathan, if we covered all your questions before we can look. Uh, I think Refilo was, uh, was covered also before we can take another round of questions. So uh, Jonathan, can you confirm if you are covered? Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I think I'm covered. I just want um, with the just quickly clarify. I, 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 my phone rang now. I just want there was another thing. The clarification in regards to the Health and Safety Officer Certificate as a mandatory requirement, whether that's a medical practitioner certificate or is it the Health and Safety Representative Certificate, what exactly what, what should be attached there? It's a representative within your organization. It doesn't have to be, yeah. If an official within your company that has the qualification. Uh, the, the qualification is, uh, it, but it's not, it's, it's a health and safety qualification, not the health and safety practitioner. Health and safety, yeah, or you are, you are, you are some tracks in your health and safety. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, Chairperson, I just want to put it to you that, I mean, the meeting was scheduled until one o'clock and I've got another engagement. So if we can wrap it up, uh, if they've got questions, there's Puitumel and myself that they can contact. I'm just saying because I don't want to leave you without uh, warning you. Thank you. Thank you, Errol. Thanks. Um, you are free to uh, to go. We'll, we'll handle the questions, but the meeting was supposed to end at one. Let us check if there's... Uh, at least two more questions before we close. Yes, we have a hand from Kwasi, we have a hand from uh, Dinito. So maybe in that order, Kwasi can go first and then follow, followed by Dinito. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Kwasi from LLB Africa, a nonprofit organization uh, based in the Northern Cape. My question um, is regarding the participating municipalities. I'm not sure if I might have missed that uh, section when you presented that, uh, because for, for our province, it, it poses a challenge uh, regarding the distances between uh, these uh, municipalities that might be participating. So maybe if you can clarify that for me, because I think it, it, it has a big bearing on on the costing of the project. Thank you. Can I clarify that? Yes, you can answer. All right. Before before I leave, yeah. Uh, uh, thanks for the question. What do we what do we've discussed with the municipality to avoid those unnecessary costs? I mean, we agree that you don't have we don't we do not go as much as we're implementing in each and every local municipality, but we're not going to touch each and every corner of that municipality. Uh, municipality might have six or five towns. So we, we discuss with them that they need to focus at least on two or three towns, depending depending on the on the on the on the on the area. So it doesn't mean that they have to cover every town. So that because with what one other thing that we, we decided on this is because we want to make an impact. So we don't want uh, two people working in in town or two people working in another corner. We want this group of people to work in one town or in one area so that we make an impact. So to address that issue. We're not going to have uh, people each and in, in each and every corner of the municipality, so it will be in a controlled manner. So we're not going to cover each and every town of the municipality. Uh, this information has already been communicated to the to the municipality. They are aware. Uh, the areas was already been identified. Even the participants, the list is available. We just need to you just need to confirm when you are appointed because you know I mean two months or three months is a lot. Uh, some people get opportunities, some people like they will pass also, there will be changes so that we need to confirm. But the areas will be 
prescribed and we don't want to go around all over the, the municipality and we don't make an impact in terms of what we want to achieve because what we need to achieve we need to we need to make sure that I mean, the area is clean the area it's 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 it's, it's, it's very healthy for the, the the communities but we're not going to cover for each and every corner we we understand there are bigger especially northern northern cape i know like i mean from one town to one town it 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 it, 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 it it's a distance like your water back there those districts are very big I mean, thanks Uh, are you covered, Kwasi? Um, to a certain degree, um, but it still uh, leaves that uh, open. Say, for ex example, I'm in Francis Bard and I have to go to a municipality out there in Uppington. Um, do you see what I'm saying? If, if there is that... that uh, but I know, it's fine. I, like, mm. I get what you're saying, but that, 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 that means it means you're costing, you need to cater for that. Remember, we don't prescribe to you how much you need to cost. So it means you are costing you what must cater to that. Okay, so worst case scenario, that's what I must cost for. Yes, worst case scenario, exactly. Thank you. Because we also don't want to cancel a project because you're saying no, but I didn't cost for this. So, I mean, cost as much as, I mean, worst case scenario, because we don't want to say you when we appoint, we've seen when people, they just, I mean, bidding for the for the sake of getting the job. I remember one guy was was quoting, well, he quoted very less, and we could tell that I mean, this person cannot. Go, I'm just giving an example. Cannot do the job. But in terms of the prescript, sometimes they say you you award it to the lowest bid, and when you or the highest scoring point, and that because the the pricing was low, you 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 are forced to award to that person. But before they start, they said no. We just wanted to see if we can get the project from government because we've been bidding and we didn't get. So we deliberately putting the low price so that I mean we can see whether it's a price or is something else. And and when we cancel the project, it means we'll have to restart the I mean uh, 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 doing supply chain and process re-advertising and everything, which is very costly. So we don't want that. We need to avoid that. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Kwasi, and thanks, Errol. And then if uh, Kwasi is covered, then we can go to Geneto and then uh, Philas. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, yeah, my name is Lukolo Geneto. Uh, I'm coming from a company called Vivo Group. Um, I just have a few questions. Um, so I think the first one is, um, will the dep department require a... Um, certificate and quali or qualification of the medical practitioner that will be doing the medical um, surveillance. So must we submit that as part of the bid? So that is the first question. The second question, can the main contractor um, subcontract a single company across the provinces that the main, con the main contractor is bidding for? Or must it be a separate subcontract for each province? And uh, my last question. So it stated the bid is um, evaluated on 90, 90 over 10, which means the expected um, cost is over 15 million. So what happens in the case when the bidder actually bids below 50 million? How will that be evaluated? Um, thank you. Those are the three questions that I have. Thank you. I think there's um, Hector. You said there's someone else. I don't see their hand. There is a Philazi Enterprise. Yeah, that should be the last one, Hector, please. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Bongengosi Fila for Philazi Enterprise. My question was, will be the recording of this uh, meeting be available on request? That's all. OK, you can respond now, um, Petra. Thank you, Phyllis. OK, thanks. Uh, uh, 
Inito and Kwasi uh, and uh, Filazi. So I would, I would try to answer some question and then where I miss Jack or Emily will come in. Uh, I'll start with the one for Filazi Enterprise. Uh, the recording will be available on the website. Uh, I'll just check with my colleagues here or whether it's today or after how many days. Uh, yes, we, will, we will need to check with IT um, how soon I can put it there, but it will be available. Okay, thanks, Jack. I think uh, Felaz is covered. And then uh, there is a question from Geneto. I think if you would you can come in if Errol is gone. Uh, okay. Okay. Okay, Errol. Yes. Yeah, the issue of um, uh, OMP certificate. They don't need to to submit it with the tender document, but I mean it's part of the terms of reference when they are appointed. Uh, working together because with the project manager will be managing the project. Uh, th those are the requirements. They need to have those, so we don't budge on that one. So we don't want to complicate their life. It's not part of the evaluation criteria, but it's part of the terms of reference when they appoint the, 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 the service provider for medical practitioners. Uh, those requirements are, are required as per the terms of reference. So we, we're, not, we're, not, we're, not, we're not appointing a general practitioner. It's a medical health practitioners as stated on the terms of reference. So that one can come after uh, because you need to get an approval from the project manager in terms of who you are appointing for that because we don't want to be to found one thing. We've seen where people they are appointing just a, 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 a general practitioner for, for instead of medical health, um, medical, health uh, medical practitioners as prescribed in the terms of reference. Thank, thank, thanks, colleagues, and I'm, I'm going. Thank you very much, Errol. And then if there is anything, then we, we will communicate through email. Maybe you can attend later after the meeting. Thank you very much. Uh, the other question from Janito was about, uh, is it possible to, or, or the main contractor to subcontract a, a single contractor across the, uh, the, 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 the board? Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, we are not limiting you to say uh, choose one subcontractor per province, so it's up to the main contractor. As long as uh, the main contractor make, uh, made a determination to say uh, this subcontractor is capable, has the resources to undertake all those subcontracting projects uh, across the province. Uh, from the department side, uh, we don't have a problem with that. Uh, as long as uh, the subcontractor will be able to undertake those projects. So the answer is yes, you can uh, subcontract a single contractor across the, the, the provinces. Yeah. And then okay. the second question was about uh, uh, the tender is about 90-10, and then he wanted to know what happened in a case where uh, where bidders are quoting uh, less than uh, less than uh, 50 million, like they are putting on 8020. So it depends if the prices are, some prices are on 8020, some prices are on 9010. Uh, you want to come in there? Okay. Mm -hmm. Jack, want to come in? Okay. Um, afternoon again. Um, events, okay. Ah, sorry. Uh, it was uh, the caller. So yes. the question regarding the 9010, the department went with the 9010 principle as the entire project is going to amount to more than this according to our evaluation. So it's not dependent on the specific province. If a province comes in at lower than the, the threshold, so the, the, the bid will be evaluated according to the 9010 as we are working on the total project cost. Okay. Not not per um, province, but for the total. Not per province. We we are working on the total project cost to the department. That is what we consider when we do the to, when we do the price or the point the point selection for the bid. Okay, 
Then um, I also just want to add on what Hector said regarding the subcontracting. Um, we will not disqualify you to say that you used only one subcontractor. But you as the bidder need to go and do your homework. Will this be feasible for you? You might have the infrastructure to cover the entire country, but your subcontractor might not be able to do that. So that might influence your cost in the end because now you will need to carry this person. Okay, yeah. so yeah. my advice to you is do your homework and see if it's feasible. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Jack. Uh, uh, Chairperson, I think from our side, uh, we've answered the question that came or that we asked, and then we are covered. We don't need anything to add or to say. And then uh, we just want to thank all prospective health provider that came to briefing. Uh, we thank you for your time and for your contribution to this briefing. So. Lastly, what I want to say, if there will be any changes, uh, we will communicate, we will also put it on the website. So we are requesting you to always check the website uh, so that if there is any changes, we will communicate as such. Uh, from my side, uh, thank you very much, a uh, prospective service provider. Thank you very much, Mutumelo, Errol, Chairperson, Emily, and Jack. Uh, back to you, Chairperson. So there is no other hand. Thank you. Thank you, Hector, and and thanks, colleagues. Um, you've done um, a very good job. I think then to everyone on the platform, we've got two emails that appear on the terms of reference: that of Mr. Errol uh, Baloi and Miss uh, uh, Buitumelo Jamini. You you need to send your questions there. Um, to, to their emails and then they'll be able to, um, to, to, to answer to some of the questions that uh, you, 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 you would um, have to raise as you prepare your documents, um, but also to, to provide follow-ups or clarity on some of the issues that were discussed um, here. And thank you so much for um, those who managed to raise critical questions because I believe they assisted others um, in on, on the platform. I would then like to say um, thank you very much and good luck um, as you prepare to um, submit. Hector, you want to say something? Okay, um, good job. I just yeah. want to, uh, based on what you just said, whenever bidders have got any question, please let them include everyone on the contact list on the SD1. Because the reason being, um, the, amount or the number of emails that people receive, if one misses it, they can always inform the other one to say, please can you answer this. So let's just include everyone that's whose contact details are there, so that someone will at least get to that. Thank you, Jack. That's that's a, a very good um, comment and suggestion. Um, so we've got, um, except for Errol, there's other um, people that you can uh, contact. They appear on the um, um, terms of reference as well. So <coughs> include just everyone who's got an email that appears on the terms of reference, because some of the questions um, would want uh, um, someone who comes from the line function and other questions would want someone from SCM, but it's better for all of us to receive those um, uh, questions at, at once. Um, with that, it's 20 past um, one um, now. Um, we started at 10. Um, I think thank you for, 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 for your time and thank you for staying up until this time. Um, the meeting is officially closed. Thank you. Bye.